Welcome to Hattiesburg, Mississippi for Conference USA Football. We're in M.M. Roberts Stadium, better known as The Rock. I'm Jason Baker, joined by Marchant Kenny. And Marchant, what a ball game we have in store today between Western Kentucky and Southern Miss. Let's start with the Hilltoppers. They've got a gentleman, D'Angelo Malone, their defensive end. He can impact this game from the defensive line. Well, all week breaking down this game, there was one name that was a theme all week, and that was number 10, D'Angelo Malone. His defensive coordinator, Clayton White, said he's never seen that kind of backside speed pursuit from a guy in his career, and that's saying a lot because he's got a lot of coaching tenure. D'Angelo White, as far as defensive linemen are concerned, statistically in the nation, leading the nation in defensive lineman tackles per game. I mean, this guy is a special player. Quiet off the field, great teammate, but one of the best quotes I've ever heard he's got. He said, I get to a dark place on the football field, and it's just me and the ball carrier. Yeah, and literally on the other side of the ball for Southern Miss, their offensive line play will be key today. Beginning with the senior left tackle, Drake Dorbeck, who was named the Kent Hall Award winner just this very week in Mississippi. I'll tell you what, he's got his hands full today with Malone on the other side of the ball, but you talk about a special matchup if you like battles between the trenches. It's it's Dorbeck versus Malone all day. They're going to be uh, switching Malone to the left to the right side, but when they're head-to-head, -head, it's a special matchup to watch. Boy, it's going to be a lot of fun in the Pine Belt today. It's Western Kentucky and Southern Miss. We're coming back with a kick on ESPN. Welcome back to Hattiesburg, Mississippi at M.M. Roberts Stadium. Jason Baker, Marchant, Kenny with you. Marchant, this ball game huge for a lot of reasons, and you'll see why here as we take a look at the Conference USA standings for Southern Miss. There's still a lot on the line for the Golden Eagles. Oh, I tell you what, right now a 2.30 kickoff going on here in Hattiesburg, and there's also a 2.30 kickoff in Birmingham right now with La Tech and UAB. So if La Tech doesn't handle business out in Birmingham and Southern Miss does, and Southern Miss wins out for the rest of the season, they're going to the Conference USA Championship game. This is a huge, huge game today for Southern Miss. And for the Golden Eagles, there's still a chance they could host the Conference USA Championship game. But first things first, they got to get a win against a Hilltopper team coached by first-year head coach Tyson Helton. And Helton is going to lead his team, and he'll have the ball first to start this ball game today as Southern Miss has won the toss and elected to defer Marchant. So we're going to get a look at Ty Story, their quarterback, first. Oh, yeah, Ty Story, what a, what a story, no pun intended, right there. I mean, obviously, they're, two weeks ago, they went into Arkansas and beat Arkansas 45-19. to He was the start, the starting quarterback at Arkansas here. Lost the job, transfers to Western Kentucky, goes to his old team, and, and really opens up a whole uh, a whole can up there, 45 to 19. So here's a big game today for him as well, with big time Conference USA implications on the line. Yeah, you see the Western Kentucky Chrome helmets. You see new jerseys, new uniforms for that heathered uniform out of the Adidas brand for Southern Miss. They're debuting this black on white uniform here today. It's the blackout in the rock on a picture-perfect fall Saturday afternoon. We are excited to bring you Conference USA football action to kick it away. Well, we've got a momentary. The ball falls off the tee. There is a little breeze, and what's interesting is Southern Miss kicking away from the scoreboard. That ball, that breeze is expected to anticipate, intensify as this uh, front that is coming through South Mississippi comes through through the night. So uh, wind could be a factor in this one today. You already see it blow the football off. Andrew Stein approaches the football, and we are underway in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, this afternoon for Western Kentucky. This is Jaquez Sloan, and Sloan has it out to the 25-yard line for the Hilltoppers. And here comes Tyson Helton's offense, the first-year head coach. They're 7-3 and three overall. As Marchant mentioned just a moment ago, they are one game back in the Conference USA East standings, although a lot's got to happen for the Hilltoppers. It's still a realistic possibility that they could win the East, but a lot's got to happen. It all starts here today with this offense for Ty Story. This will be a fun matchup to watch today, this Western Kentucky offense versus this Southern Miss defense. All of a sudden, the past few weeks, this Southern Miss nasty bunch defense has been playing really, really well. Story has his starting tailback. That's Gage Walker with the ball and out across the 30-yard line. 
to the 31. Walker, a six foot, 195 pound junior out of Tampa, Florida. Yeah, and what you like right there is to see that Southern Miss secondary step up. You want, you want your secondary to be very physical. Ty Williams coming up strong and making the play right there, but still a, a five or six yard gain for Western Kentucky. So Story, they'll work primarily out of the shotgun. Brings a man across, that's his leading target. That's Lucky Jackson, who's got it and is met immediately. A nice tackle made. That looks like Rishun Mitchell, who makes the stop for the Golden Eagles from his cornerback position. Oh yeah, an aggressive defense like Southern Miss. Don't be surprised with these quick outs like this all day, but Williams really, really quick play ability to make the tackle in the open field and he, he stops him right there but just enough for uh, Western Kentucky to get that first down as I see now. That was reception number one for Lucky Jackson. He had a ball game earlier this year. He had 16 receptions. That was in the loss to Marshall. Story with the handoff here. This is Walker. Walker trying to turn the corner and will. He's going to dive forward and possibly have a first down to the marquee mount right at the 43 yard line is where they'll give him the official spot. Yeah, we've talked a lot about this defense for Western Kentucky and really hadn't talked a lot about the running game. They love to run the ball in Hilltopper country and another first down there for Western Kentucky really stretching out this Southern Miss defense. Yeah, both Story and Gage Walker, they both are running threat. Story had 17 rushes and 77 yards, two touchdowns in that win over Arkansas. He stands in the gun with Walker to his right, RPO here, and Walker bangs his way forward to pick up a first down here on second down. Playing very physical football right now, Western Kentucky trying to set the tone, and that's one thing you want to do is set the tone early, going right up the middle there for the first down. So they're stretching it outside, stretch, putting it inside. Um, four wide receiver sets. We've seen a lot of looks already out of Western Kentucky, so really game planning well against this uh, pretty aggressive defense. Yeah, and their last action two weeks ago, Walker, 23 carries, 129 yards, and a touchdown over Arkansas. Story looking to throw out here to Walker, and it's nearly intercepted by Ty Williams. Yeah, heck of a play right there, but a drop ball by Gage. It uh, could have been really nasty for that Western Kentucky offense, um, bringing up a second down situation and long for the Hilltoppers. Boy, Ty Williams has got to come up with that pick, a senior cornerback for this Golden Eagle ball club. So Story in the gun. He'll bring a man in motion. Looking to throw his story now. He will fire it out. This is caught. Quinn Jernigan has the football and a first down for the Hilltoppers down to the 41-yard line of Southern Miss. Yeah, Southern Miss is more or less a zone defense right there and a little curl route, finding the holes in that zone and first down Hilltoppers. And they're moving the ball methodically and surely against, against the Golden Eagles right now. A 12-yard pass completion that time to Jernigan. Trevor Story so far two for three for 16 yards passing for the Hilltoppers on the opening drive this afternoon. And really a ball game that's uh, got Conference USA Championship implications for either squad. Here's Story rolling to his right, and he is going to throw this pass incomplete. That was Lucky Jackson on that far side. Yeah, he can run the ball, a dual threat quarterback right here. He ran the ball 17 times against Arkansas, but Santro Latham coming up, kind of a spy look against that quarterback and forcing him to throw the ball and bringing up another second and long situation. Boy, a look at that replay, and Lucky was extremely close to being inbounds. Had to be the heel of his cleat that marked him out of bounds. So second down for Western Kentucky. Ty Story in that shotgun. That's Jackson in motion to the top of your screen. Story going to throw this out. It is going to be caught. With it is, that's Joshua Simon, the tight end, and a late penalty flag at the end of the play comes in. Be interesting here, possible targeting um, the way that Ty Williams came in right there, so it'll be an interesting call right here. But you've seen Ty Williams all over the field early on. Definitely one of the better defenders in that Golden Eagles secondary. So if this is a possible targeting call, that'd be a big hit against, against this defense early on. So 
Another replay look at it. And you see the head down. That's uh, almost textbook helmet Personal to helmet. Foul. Targeting on the defense, number seven. So they're going to call it on Ty Williams. Well, the crowd doesn't like it, but when they see a replay, they'll understand why this penalty was called. Yeah, this rule has been in effect pretty heavily for a while now, and that's just definitely not something in football that you, you want to see and, um, you know, always pick your head up, and he didn't right there. Yeah, so they're going to take a look at it while we uh, have this stoppage of play on the field. want to remind you, Southern Miss already down one of their starting defensive backs, Shannon Showers, who was ejected at the 11:29 mark of the third quarter last week over in San Antonio. They could be possibly without their second secondary personnel starter in Ty Williams here if this penalty uh, is found to be upheld from the look that we had just a moment ago. You see Jay Hobson a little upset at the moment, uh, but from the look that we saw a moment ago, boy, it awfully looks like this uh, penalty is going to uphold. No, referees are definitely sticklers for that helmet to helmet nowadays, and uh, that was kind of, like I said, textbook helmet to helmet. Here we get another look at it right there. You see his head down. Shows what we know. Shows what we know, but it did look helmet to helmet from up here, and uh, so I guess Southern Miss got a, definitely got away with one right there because that would have been rough. Showers out from last game with the targeting in this first half, and then Williams going down would have been really detrimental to this secondary. So uh, that's a sigh of relief for Coach Jay Hobson in that defense. Here's the starting lineup for the Hilltoppers. By the way, they were one of two teams to return all 60 starts on the offensive line from a year ago, the other team in the Pac-12, Oregon, can hold that notion. They are a veteran crew up front. Now the crowd here in the rock on their feet. In motion, that's Jacor Pearson across the formation. Story with all kinds of time, and this pass is gonna be complete. Yeah, right at the sticks. That's Jacor Pearson, the man who went in motion across the formation in March Sand. He's just got a lot of time right now in this pocket. You're seeing a lot of these out routes right now, and it's perfect timing between Story and his receivers. This Southern Miss defense being stretched out on the field. This is exactly how you wanted to start the game, too, if you're Western Kentucky, get the crowd out of it. A slow, methodical drive, take some time off the clock, and, and really grind it against this Southern Miss defense. They go back into the belly of Gage Walker, and he is stuffed right there. The middle linebacker. Rakeem Booth, the junior out of Bassfield, and the starting lineup for the Southern Miss, Jay Hobson's defense. You see them, they've really begun to pick it up over the last couple of games. You see a picture of one of the leaders of that defense, probably the most talented uh, pros prospect on this team from NFL standards, DQ Thomas, but also Rakeem Booth with a big play right there. Rakeem missed two games earlier this year and uh, from injury, and when he came back, it really set the tone for this Southern Miss defense. The irony of him getting back on the field and Southern Miss playing so much better since he came back. Well, the Conference USA leader in time of possession so far with this football, four minutes and 12 seconds, and another completion here by Story. That's up to Jacor Pearson. Pearson making a couple plays early on right here. Uh, those slant routes really tough to stop. Brings up a third and short situation. It'll be interesting what Southern Miss does here. They've shown a lot of blitz looks, so see if they pressure right up the middle and try to stop uh, stop Story in this offense. Don't be surprised, Gage though, right up the middle, because like we know, Western Kentucky does like to pound the ball. Pearson leads this team. He's Story's favorite receiver down inside the red zone. He leads this team with five touchdowns. They're three yards shy of the end zone at the moment. And here you see a design power run by Ty Story. They like to do this. I don't know that he's going to make the down marker. It will depend on the spot here. Indication across the field indicates fourth down. Ty Story, one of those dual threat quarterbacks, running that power right up the middle that Tim Tebow made famous at Florida. You know, when you have a big quarterback that can run the ball, it's a definite advantage on short yarded situations. And here they're in a tight lineup with fourth and short. They like to do this. Fourth down. They are 11 and 19 on the year. And I don't know that Story made the down marker. He lost the football in the process as well. We'll see what the initial call comes from the field. Tyson Helton, the head coach of the Hilltoppers, all the way down to the number of the 20 across the field. He's indicating it should be a first down. And yes. they're going to say first down. Yeah, they get it 58% of the time when they go for it on fourth down. And you see the look here by Ty Story. Yeah, this is man-on-man -man football right here. Battle in the trenches. Every inch counts right there. And Story just getting enough 
for the first down for the Hilltoppers. And I can't stress enough, this is the exact tone they wanted to set coming into Hattiesburg being this Western Kentucky offense. They like to ground it out, like to pound the ball. Uh, they're nothing fancy, but they make things, things happen, that's for sure. Boy, he's awfully close. A knifing in there was the Mario Smith from that defensive line for Southern Miss, but the play stands. Pearson motioned into the backfield. Look at his trickeration. They're going to toss it around. This is to Jaquez Sloan. Sloan has got room, and he's in. Jaquez Sloan from 21 yards out on a rush attempt on a reverse for the Hilltoppers, and they take an early lead. Six to nothing. Yeah, that play was set up perfectly because the way this drive was going, a little bit slow, a little bit but lethargic, almost lulled the Southern Miss defense to sleep. So what do you do? You run a trick oration, like you say, like right there. Backside defensive end, uh, Whittington didn't do his job and stay home. And then great block on the outside, cut it up field. I mean, touchdown Hilltoppers and uh, kind of the perfect play for what the, the way that drive was going. Well, you see the speed out of the junior from Atlanta and Jaquez Sloan on to Attempt the PAT. This is Corey Munson for the Hilltoppers. Center cut and through. 7-0 Western Kentucky, 9-0-3. Here in the opening quarter, left to play. It'll be the Golden Eagles' turn when we return on... Jaquez Sloan from 21 yards out has Western Kentucky on top of Southern Miss early here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi today in March Chant. Another look. It was a perfect time for a play like this. I mean, this Western Kentucky offense kind of mulling their way down the field slowly with curl routes, runs up the middle, and kind of lulled the Southern Miss defense to sleep. And sure, what do you do right there? You run a trick play, and uh, the backside defensive end for Southern Miss didn't do his job. You're always coached to stay home on that backside, but he got suckered into the play, and sure enough, the reverse up the field for the touchdown. Here's the kickoff by Munson. It'll be a touchback, as that was mishandled in the end zone, that was Watkins who mishandled it. He's in place of Jalen Adams, who won't be with the Southern Miss Golden Eagle team today. He's not even dressed out, uh, is Jalen Adams, who's one of the nation's best kick returners. And now our first look at Jack Abraham and Buster Faulkner's offense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The wide receiver in core so talented for Southern Miss. It's not good to lose a Jalen Adams, obviously, one of the most talented guys on the field. But when you have Quez Watkins, Jordan Mitchell coming back this week, who we've said all season was one of the most uh, consistent players for, for Southern Miss. You know, you really don't miss a beat with what they have in that core, but you do not like to have Jalen Adams on the sidelines for sure. Opening play for Southern Miss. This is to Michael Harris, who has absolutely no room, but somehow finds his way through and across and up to the 30-yard line goes to Michael Harris, the senior out of Vicksburg. What a talented guy to Michael Harris is. Travinsky Mosley, obviously earlier this season going down, they needed someone in that position. There you get a good look at Jack Abraham, who's having a heck of a season, one of the most accurate passers in Southern Miss history. Abraham into the belly of Michael Harris again, and that's only a pickup of two for the leading rusher on this ball club for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Right. Check that, actually Perkins leads them now with yards at 5.09, but Harris has really been the guy into the forefront. Oh, absolutely, and there you get a good look at that Southern Miss offense right there from top to bottom. I mean, one of the best offenses in Conference USA easily, especially passing the ball, they're 20th in the nation right now. And the first look at the Golden Eagles, look at Watkins downfield and it'll be broken up, that's the safety who gets over Devin Key, the redshirt junior out of Lexington, Kentucky, comes over the top and breaks that pass out of Quez's hands. We knew this Southern Miss offense would try to stretch the field with Quez uh, downfield, and we just saw that. Uh, Western Kentucky susceptible to the big play as we've seen on film, but Devin Key making a great play right there. He leads the team in pass breakups with six on the season. There was number seven, stopping a very dangerous player in Quez Watkins. Zach Everett said to punt it away. Everett comes in, averaging 46 and a half yards to punt this away on the season and a line drive kick. This is at Roger Cray, who is going to let it hit. It will take a Golden Eagle roll inside the 20-yard line, officially marked at the 16, and we'll get a second look at the Hilltopper offense. 7.56 to play opening quarter. They scored on the Jacquez Sloan 21-yarder just a few moments ago and uh, for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky, Tyson Helson, Helton has got to be awfully pleased with his club, Marchand, in the start.
to come in here on the road, their first trip into Hattiesburg. Well, a cool side note about Tyson Helton, he definitely knows Southern Miss. He was a former quarterback for the Houston Cougars in the 90s. I uh, actually played against one of those Houston Cougar teams that uh, upset us and upset Southern Miss for the Conference USA Championship that year. So he definitely knows a lot about Hattiesburg and what it has to offer. And you know he's enjoying this 7 and nothing lead early. Southern Miss makes a shift on the defensive line motion from the Hilltoppers. And this is Gage Walker, who has had quite a bit of room early in this one. He'll get it out across the 22-yard line is where Gage Walker will go down before he is chopped down by number nine, Malik Short. Shorts is the guy in place of showers, Marchand. Oh, absolutely right there. But what you notice right now is this experienced offensive line of Western Kentucky uh, giving Southern Miss all they want right now. Just pinning the whole defensive line in right there. Even Rakeem Booth stepping up from his linebacker spot, getting pinned in, and sure enough, some open space for Gage to run. The Hilltoppers went on a 14-play drive to open this ball game. Story with all kinds of time. I mean, absolutely zero pressure from up front of the Golden Eagles defensive line. He'll complete the pass to Lucky Jackson, his second reception of this ball game. Yeah, I tell you what, Story's getting a lot of time in the pocket right now, and that's not good news for the Southern Miss defense. Don't be surprised if defensive coordinator Tim Billings of Southern Miss starts giving some different looks, maybe blitzing from the outside. Uh, so it'll be interesting to hear what they do in this third and short situation. They're a team that uh, converts it at 32% on the year from third down. Each of these teams, one of the best at third down. Southern Miss over 42% conversion rate offensively as well. The Hilltoppers here changing the play, it appears, from Ty Story in a timeout. Tyson Helton, the Hilltoppers head coach, out on the field to call timeout to speak to his offensive unit on a third and one here with at the ball spotted at the 25 yard line. So our official tells us and indicates a full timeout. Seven nothing Western Kentucky, third and short when we return from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Third and short facing the Hilltoppers here in the Rock this afternoon. A good start for Western Kentucky thus far. Their offensive line really beginning to assert themselves on a veteran crew. And this is Story on the keeper, and he'll have the first down for the Hilltoppers. And Marchant, when you look at this offensive line, boy, they're a veteran crew. We mentioned that they returned all 60 starts from a year ago, only one of two teams in the country to do that, and you see why here. Oh, absolutely. This offensive line, as far as a core on this team, that's the strength of their team. I mean, they've got D'Angelo Malone on the defense that we talk about a lot, but as far as a group, this offensive line is probably the best one in Conference USA overall. Yeah, they were a unit that didn't allow a negative play in that win two weeks ago over Arkansas. Here's a pass to the tight end, Joshua Simon, who stays on his feet, and he'll get it all the way down to the 25 yard line of Southern Miss. What a pass completion to the tight end who's got 20 receptions on the season for the Hilltoppers. Oh yeah, play action right there when you're successful running the ball, it sets up plays like this and wide open in space is Simon. Big target too, a tight end 6'5", 235 pounds getting the first down and we got a Golden Eagle down right now. Uh, definitely don't wanna see that. 47-yard pass completion to Joshua Simon, who's also second on this team in touchdown receptions. He's a big target, a six-foot five, 235-pound freshman out of Crestwood High School in South Carolina. Trying to get the number on Terry Whittington, I believe. No, nope, excuse me, Raheem Booth is who's going to be assisted off the field head athletic trainer Todd McCall assisting him off the field but uh, Marchant what what a start for Western Kentucky in this football game here today on the road in Conference USA. Well Southern Miss opened up the week as almost a six point favorite in this game well you know Vegas brought it down to three points so somebody knew something and uh, you and I felt all week that Western Kentucky and uh, Southern Miss are going to be two evenly matched teams and the Golden Eagles were going to have their hands full and sure enough, they're doing a great job setting the tone here. I mean, this Western Kentucky team is really good. I know Arkansas is not having the best year, but any time you go into an SEC stadium and win 45 to 19, and Jason, that score could have been worse, let's be honest. They handed it to uh, an SEC football team on the road. So this is a very, very good football team. Yeah, they scored first. Arkansas responded. Then Western Kentucky went on to score 28 unanswered points in the first half. 
Marshant. So what a response on the road. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Story going to take a look over at the Hilltopper sideline. They'll await the play call from offensive coordinator Brian Ellis. Ellis will be a familiar face to the Golden Eagle faithful. He was a quarterback for the UAB Blazers in 2011. This is Lucky Jackson's third reception up to the 20-yard line. And right now, it's just too easy for the Hilltoppers. Not a lot of pressure to Story. And so far, the coverage has been awfully soft on the Hilltopper wide receivers. Yeah, I'm surprised defensive coordinator Tim Billings hasn't really uh, changed the look of what he's doing right now. I mean, this is just uh, pitch and catch for this Western Kentucky team right now, methodically moving the ball down the field. And uh, I mean, already in the rent zone once again, and Southern Miss does not want to get down 14 to nothing this early in the game. Story's eight of 10 to start this game in the pass, tipped up in the air and nearly picked off Malik Shorts was the closest Golden Eagle to it. Story got hit that time, and now you see Billings maybe beginning to dial up that pressure. Yeah, yeah right after I said that, and who brought the pressure was Terry Whittington, probably one of the most impressive looking guys in the Golden Eagle uniform uh, out there. But Whittington, as we've seen this season, really come on play the Alcorn State transfer, went up beating out Torrance Brown for that Wolf starting spot, and a uh, big play right there for the Golden Eagles, really changing the tone here up a third and five. Yeah, Whittington had a sack and a quarterback hurry last week in San Antonio. Story fires it out. This is pop loose, a pass broken up by Ty Williams. That's his 12th on the season. He leads this team in PBUs. Yeah, they must have seen something this week with Ty Williams because really trying to pick on him out there with this soft zone defense that Southern Miss is playing right there. But Ty said, uh-uh, not this time. He steps up, makes the play, and gets the pass break up. Boy, he did an awesome job of putting his helmet on the football in a fourth and five. And the Hilltoppers appear they want to go for it. They've already been successful on one fourth down so far this season. And they know fourth down very well. And Tim Billings and Jay Hobson want a moment to speak to their Golden Eagle defense as well. And finishing that thought right there, I mean, Western Kentucky feels very comfortable on fourth downs. I mean, speaking of the dominance they had against Arkansas, they were five for five on fourth downs up in, up in Arkansas for that game. So this is a, uh, a team that's very, very confident, and they know what they can do. And the way they're moving the ball, why not go for it? We've mentioned, too, the wind factor into today. There is quite a breeze down inside M.M. Roberts Stadium today. Their field goal kicker, Corey Munson, has a long of 48, so he has plenty of leg. He's 13 of 20, though, on the season. He does have seven missed field goals on the season. And after the timeout, yeah. <laughs> here come the Hilltoppers in their field goal unit. Yeah, we talked about Corey Munson, the kicker for Western Kentucky this week, kind of one of those hit or miss kickers. He's missed several field goals this year, but on the flip side of things, he was the Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Week twice. So it's like, man, it's a uh, Jekyll and Hyde kicking situation at times with Western Kentucky. This will be a 38-yard attempt for Corey Munson. From the right hash, and it's a fake by the Hilltoppers. Taking off with it is their holder, and he's going to be stopped. The holder. Great that play right there by the Golden Eagles. Ty Williams, who was getting sick of getting picked on, sat home, and that's definitely what you want to see on a fake play. If you do your job and hold your assignments, fake plays won't work against you. Now, what happened on that uh, the reverse earlier? What happened? Southern Miss had some missed assignments, hence a touchdown. This time, Williams stays home, makes the play, and a big play for the Golden Eagles. We'll be back. After the stand on a fake field goal up top goes Jack Abraham and a penalty flag here. He was looking to Tim Jones, whose role has increased with the absence of Jalen Adams, and he draws the penalty here. One thing about this game, it's been a, it's been a lot of things we expected. Well, here, let's let the ref talk real quick. On the defense, number 15, 15-yard 15 penalty, automatic. A Just lot down. of things we've expected to see is actually happening in this game. This Western Kentucky offense kind of methodical in their approach, driving down the field, being successful there. But one thing we said all week, sure, Western Kentucky statistically is very good at pass defense, 14th. But one thing they will give up is the big play. You see that on film quite a bit from them. And we thought that Southern Miss would stretch the field. We already saw Quez Watkins deep and then Tim Jones right there on the pass interference play. Yeah, what Marchant's referred to, they've given up 15 plays, passing plays of 30 yards or more. 
Abraham, play action pass, steps up and fires downfield. This is Tim Jones, wide open, and he's got it, and he is gone. Tim Jones, the junior out of Biloxi with the touchdown for Southern Miss. You know, I'm not going to say I told you so, Jason, but you and I talked all week, the nine route. Look for this deep ball consistently from Southern Miss because speed-wise, obviously, Southern Miss, that receiving core, super fast. Tim Jones, maybe talent-wise from a big scale of things, could be the most, most talented guy. I mean, he's hard to bring down. They call him the bodyguard of that Southern Miss wide receiving core. Just a tough guy, too. Boy, and what a way to have your 100th career reception for Tim Jones. A 69-yard touchdown pass from Jack Abraham to Tim Jones. Boy, they went right back up top. And we're an extra point away from a tie ball game in Hattiesburg. Everett will hold the freshman kicker, and Andrew Stein puts it through. 7-7 seven to seven on a Bluebird Sky Day in the Pine Belt here for Conference USA football. And both of these teams Marchant really sticking with their storylines coming in. And here you see Abraham dropping a dime to Tim Jones. It's so funny listening to Coach Hop talk about his offense. I mean, he lights up because, you know, what do you do? Double team Quez Watkins? Well, what does that do? That opens up Tim Jones. Well, what do you guard Tim Jones? And you got the Michael Harris. I mean, right there, play action to the Michael Harris. So the linebackers have to step up, freezes the secondary. Tim Jones, nine route right down the field and touchdown Golden Eagles. Boy, it'll be a long time before he forgets that one for Tim Jones. His 100th career reception as a Golden Eagle. This is as talented of a wide receiving core as you will find, not, not just in Conference USA, but maybe in the entire southeastern region. Boy, they're awfully good. They're without the services of Jalen Adams today. Jones's presence will be felt with that increased role. Yeah, if, if I'm a pass defender for Western Kentucky today, it's it's going to be a long day as far as, like, who do I defend, who do I go against? Um, I mean, just so many weapons on that offensive side of the ball for the Golden Eagles. And Jack Abraham is so accurate. I mean, I've heard some announced teams this year <laughs> refer to him as a Drew Brees-type quarterback because he is that accurate six-foot guy, not the biggest guy in the pocket, but just looks that part uh, very cool and collected in the pocket always, too. Yeah, Abraham says that's who he tries to mirror his game after. Andrew Stein has it teed up at the 35 and a hanging kick here. It's going to be taken by Jacquez Sloan. Sloan has a touchdown today, and boy, he is knocked off his feet at the 21-yard line. Great coverage by that Southern Miss Golden Eagle offense, or excuse me, kick coverage unit. That's Swayze Bozeman, who is slow to get up. He made the stop. Did Bozeman, yeah, we were waiting to catch his number, and uh, boy, Bozeman doesn't look well. Yeah, one heck of a player right there, too, and if Bozeman goes down, that means two of your starting linebackers are out right now with Booth getting hurt and Bozeman now getting hurt. Definitely not what you want to see, because uh, this Western Kentucky offense has been pretty successful so far with 142 yards in the first quarter. Bozeman, a guy who has really seen his role increase for Tim Billings' defense. Bozeman on the season, 43 tackles. He's got five and a half tackles for loss, four sacks. He had a night last Saturday night over in San Antonio. Nine tackles, two sacks, and a fumble recovery against the Roadrunners of UTSA. That's a big loss to Swayze Bozeman. We'll have to see who they bring in in his replacement. It looks like the redshirt freshman, Hayes Maples, the hometown, the hometown kid out of Hattiesburg. Hero. Kid. Yep. Yeah, they, they love him out in these parts. Oak Grove High School just down the road. and. Uh, he's already played some, some minutes this year, and uh, so he'll have to play a lot more this game. He's got 19 tackles on the season. And there he is right there making a stop on Gage Walker behind the line of scrimmage. That's his second tackle for loss on the season for the Golden Eagles. Before the season started, talking to the coaching staff at one of the practices, one of the guys they really lit up about when they mentioned people was a young guy named Hayes Maple, and you see right there, really quick, really well-sized at that linebacker position. And he can move around, because that's what they like with their linebackers. You got to play all the positions. And obviously, you got that DQ Thomas guy right out there at that nickel position. Boy, and he's one of the few guys left in college football wearing that neck protector. I know one next to me <laughs> who wore it his whole career. Man, you weren't going to out-shoulder pad me, Jason. You knew that. Ty Story looking to throw. A little more pressure now. He'll move in the pocket. 
and throw it away into the Hilltopper bench. A little more pressure being applied by this Golden Eagle defense now into the face of Ty Story. Yeah, the chess game of football really occurring right now. Coach Dim Billings, when I said a little bit earlier, he's got to adjust here. Well, he sure enough has. And one thing he likes to see is they were picking on Ty Williams out in the corner early on, but Ty Williams has stepped up with some really big plays right here, basically uh, sticking on the receiver. Yeah, he stoned the Hilltoppers on those last two plays on their second offensive possession as they drove down and attempted a fake field goal that did not obtain the first down yardage. Story in an empty set. All kinds of time again, but he'll have to throw it away. That's a coverage play there from the secondary of the Golden Eagles to have to force him to throw that football away. He had nowhere to go with it. And he had a lot of time to throw, so very impressive by that Southern Miss secondary right there. Stepping up big time, bringing up the fourth down situation. And this is a game of momentum right now, and you can totally feel the momentum starting to sway towards the guys from Hattiesburg. Well, be careful with the absence of Jalen Adams. You've got Quez Watkins, who will stand back to receive this punt for the Golden Eagles. Set the punt it away. That'll be John Haggerty, who was the holder who attempted that fake field goal. Haggerty gets a ball that will roll here, take a hilltopper, roll all the way down to the 25-yard line is where it will be finally down. So Watkins without an opportunity to return that one. 318 to play, opening quarter. And Marshan, this is shaping up to be just what we anticipated between these two clubs. Oh, absolutely. When people asked me about this game, we didn't know any better. I said, man, this is a very good Western Kentucky team coming in here. I mean, like I said, anytime you go into SEC country and win 45 to 19, like Western Kentucky did against Arkansas, I mean, you've got a solid squad. And uh, their offensive line is as good as anybody in America. They're so experienced in Western Kentucky. And uh, as you see, Southern Miss had, had to make a bunch of changes on the sidelines to, to get some pressure on Story. There you see D'Angelo Malone, their star defensive end here at the bottom of your screen. And it's a handoff to the leading rusher for the Golden Eagles. That's Kevin Perkins. And a late penalty flag here. This comes at the end of the play. Perkins is a guy, Marshan, all of a sudden he's seen his kind of role increase and he's become their thumper late in ball games, has broken off a lot of big runs in the fourth quarter. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense, number 90. 15 yard totally added on to the end of the run. Yeah, as we know, Southern Miss, Southern Miss had some injuries in that backfield in the running back core earlier this year. Their starter, Travinsky Mosley, went down early. He's been out for the season. Steven Anderson got banged up. They needed somebody to fill that role of kind of the pounding back, even though Anderson's back now. And Perkins has done a heck of a job. Big run, remember, against UAB a couple weeks ago that kind of closed out the game. Yeah, he'll stay in here to the right of Abraham. And it is a handoff to Perkins off the left tackle side, right behind the redshirt senior Drake Dorbeck, and a tackle for D'Angelo Malone, the defensive end for Western Kentucky. And it'll set up a second and nine. And they're waiting to call his name all day, D'Angelo Malone. I think uh, couldn't get enough watching his highlights. He's one of the most impressive guys on the field today. So don't be surprised we hear Malone's name a little bit more. A four wide receiver set. You've got two receivers here to this near sideline. That's Marquise McCoy, who is in for the Golden Eagles here to this near side. A handoff play here to Perkins, who will stay on his feet and bang his way forward for a gain of three. Yeah, interesting look, too, right there by that Western Kentucky defense. Man on the outside, zone on the inside. So showing Jack Abraham a bunch of looks, but that's not going to stop Kevin Perkins up the middle, that's for sure. Southern Miss choosing to stay on the ground thus far. A passing down situation here for the Golden Eagles. 19th in the country in passing offense. Hilltoppers walk their safeties down. Abraham's going down a sack. That's going to be made by 34 inside there. That's the other defensive end than Malone. That's Jawan Jones who comes up to make the, ta the tackle in the quarterback set. Yeah, you talk about Malone all the time, but we've mentioned this week leading up to the game, the guy on the other side, Jones, I mean, he's a heck of a talent as well. Honorable mention all Conference USA last year. Four and a half sacks on the season, second on the team, and really getting some pressure on Abraham to bring him down right there, bringing up the fourth, fourth down situation for Southern Miss. So third down and 14. Excuse me, fourth down. The 
yardage marker on the other side is incorrect and a fair catch called for and the Golden Eagles are going to get a roll here off the foot of Zach Everett all the way down to the three yard line in the Hilltopper territory. Boy, what a job by the punter for the Golden Eagles, Zach Everett. That's going to be his 15th punt of the year that he is down inside the 20 yard line. Oh, Zach Everett's got a heck of a leg. I mean, some of y'all may remember what he did against Louisiana Monroe with a 70 yard punt. Um, so this guy really, really can do good things in that special teams area. 40.9 yard average punting. We're really on the field. A little touch by the kicking team on the seven yard line. Maybe first down, West Kentucky. So they're going to actually say this football hit a Golden Eagle at the seven is where that will be marked down, but still deep in Hilltopper territory for the Golden Eagles. Really, the lack of pressure has allowed Ty Story to get off to an 8 of 14 start. 89 yards throwing the football. They've had a lot of success. They're at 141 total yards of Hilltopper offense. This is their running back, Gage Walker. And Walker, not a lot here, just maybe a pickup of one. What's fun to watch right now is this Southern Miss defense really adjusting on the fly. Right there for the first time, you saw a cornerback blitz for Sean Mitchell coming off the right edge. Uh, didn't need him on that play, but you're seeing a lot of change-ups to adjust to what Western Kentucky's doing. Personnel substitution. They'll bring their tight end, Joshua Simon, back in the ballgame. Simon, so far, two receptions, 51 yards. He's in the slot in the near side, bottom of your screen. Quick out, this is Quinn Jernigan with the reception. That's Jernigan's second catch of the ball game. Yeah, these quick out routes, these curls have been very successful for Western Kentucky right now. Southern Miss playing kind of a soft man zone right there, or what you want to call in that hybrid look that they do show you. But um, good timing route right there, getting the first down. 7-7 seven to seven this afternoon in Hattiesburg, Mississippi Conference. USA football action, and boy, what a good one do we have already in this one this afternoon. We'll be back with more action from ESPN. Conference USA football 7-7 Western Kentucky and Southern Miss a first quarter controlled by Western Kentucky Here's a play here tipped away Nice play made by Kyle Hemby the rover backer for this Golden Eagle defense comes over Marchand and gets his hand in there Oh, absolutely, but you really like to see what happened in the backfield right there pressure from Arguably the best player on the field DQ Thomas getting right in Story's face So you see Billings making a lot of adjustments to create some pressure for that Western Kentucky offense uh, And it's starting to pay off He's had to too. that Western Kentucky offensive line really in the opening quarter Really controlled this line of scrimmage for much of it Ty Story in the shotgun For the Hilltoppers on second down another pass to Lucky Jackson, but right there. That's that man again DQ Thomas making the tackle from his nickel back position. I mean, this Southern Miss team all over the place, they're loaded with stars of Conference USA, but NFL scouts will tell you the most talented guy probably from an NFL perspective as far as being drafted the earliest is DQ Thomas. He's one of those guys, he can play linebacker, stuff the run. He can also get him out in space and cover wide receivers. I mean, he's a special football player, and you see him make back-to-back -back big plays right there. You see Ty Story directing traffic. This is a third down from deep in their own territory, third down and 10. They're two of five on third down today. Story here will pass it out and it's dropped, incomplete. That was intended to 16, Quinn Jernigan, who's got a couple of receptions today. That pass a little wide of him, but really a play he should make. Well, kudos to Coach Tim Billings right now. I keep saying his name, but he's made a lot of adjustments, and one of my favorite blitzes to see is a delayed blitz. You saw Hayes Maples needing to step up right now, the local uh, Hattiesburg product. He delayed for about one or two seconds and then came up the middle, put pressure on Story, and probably may have caused that incomplete pass with timing. Haggerty, the Australian, punts it away. Fair catch called for by Quez Watkins. He'll make it. At the 37-yard line, that's where the Golden Eagle offense will take over to start this uh, second quarter. And really statistically, Western Kentucky has controlled this game 
But boy, Jack Abraham, you see him in the passing game, Marchant, one of two for 68 yards and a touchdown so far. And he has just been one of Conference USA's best from the quarterback position. Oh, I mean, he's so accurate. He's fun to watch. He's one of those guys, too. He just he looks the part of a quarterback. Would we say if uh, he wasn't going to play quarterback, I mean, he, he might be in a soap opera. He's just one of those guys. You know, he's kind of kind of a, a movie star guy on the field. Yeah, he's 14th in passing efficiency in the country. And this pass dropped in and out of the hands of Ray Ladner, his tight end, who was wide open crossing the middle of the field, maybe a little behind him but another play that probably should be made. Rarely see Jack Abraham throw the ball behind the receiver, but he did right there, and hence caused the incompletion, uh, brings up this second down. Western Kentucky showing that man zone look. Play action pass here. Abraham, he can run a little bit. He's done that this year. A pass here that is caught by Watkins. Boy, watch this guy go, but a penalty flag. This is all the way back near in the area of holding. Yeah, they're going to get a hold right here on the backside. The player creating the pressure that caused the hold. That was Jalen Madden. Madden's been inserted into this defensive line for Western Kentucky. He was in place of their starting defensive tackle, Jeremy Darvin, who got hurt in the Army ball game. has been working his way back into the fold. The two fouls against the offense. A legal man downfield on the offense, number 79. That call is declined. Holding number 68 of the offense. That call being enforced 10 yards to the previous spot. Remains second down. That's the right guard, Bryce Foxworth, called for the holding penalty. That's our referee, Billy Williams, giving you that call today. So that's going to put the Golden Eagles behind the sticks here. That'll set up a long second down. This is where that receiving core for Southern Miss comes into play. Even though it's second and long, third and long situations, doesn't really matter because they have so much talent they can stretch the field and you're never out of a first down situation. Yeah, they lead all of Conference USA in big plays. How about this statistic? They've had 11 pass plays over 50 yards this season. Add another one to that today with the 68 yarder to Tim Jones earlier. Here's to Michael Harris. Harris out in space. Harris. Dragged down. I think Harris thought he was grabbed by his face mask. Maybe not. It looked like maybe around the collar. That play, that's a nice defensive play made by the Hilltoppers out there. Yeah, very nice play right there. Uh, the Michael Harris in space, a little swing pass. This is kind of the stuff of nightmares for defenders, but look at the Angelo <laughs> Malone. And what did I say to lead the the, the broadcast, the defensive coordinator Clayton White for Western Kentucky said he's never seen backside pursuit from a defensive end position like Malone has. And sure enough, what did he do right there? Brought down arguably the fastest guy on the field into Michael Harris. Six foot four, 230 pounds, and he makes a play outside the numbers from his defensive end position. This is Watkins being dragged across the field. Watkins trying to avoid a man and cannot. That is a wonderful open field tackle. That's from their Mike backer, Kyle Bailey. The six foot, 225 pound junior out of Carrollton, Georgia. And look at this stop, Marshan. Yeah, anytime you tackle Quest Watkins in open space, especially a linebacker, you know, that's not the kind of matchup you want. I mean, what a heck of a play right there. Kyle Bailey leads the team in tackles and interceptions this year with 77. So, uh, tackles and definitely a short tackle right there. Southern Miss 0 for 3 on third downs to start this ball game. Roger Cray back to receive this high hanging punt by Everett. Not a long one at all. That one was caught at the 36. We'll have Hilltopper offense when we return from Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg, Mississippi this afternoon. Southern Miss and Western Kentucky. And boy, we featured him in the open. We talked about the defensive end for Western Kentucky. Look at this guy run. Oh yeah, number 10 right there, D'Angelo Malone. We talked about him all week. And his defensive coordinator, like I said before the break, said he's never seen backside pursuit speed from a defensive end like Malone has. And you gotta love that quote though. I gotta repeat it again, man. Malone's one of those quiet guys off the field. Great teammate for sure. But he imagines his favorite quote, he likes to be in a dark place and he just pictures it's him and the ball carrier. Wow. The Hilltopper offense, who's amassed 152 yards so far today. 
They're an offense that only averages 372 yards per game. Ty Story, their quarterback in the shotgun. He's got a man, and he is loose. That's Jock Cor Pearson, and he is gone. 64 yards, and the pass completion to Jock Cor Pearson has Western Kentucky back on top, 13 to seven. Huge play right there. I mean, this game, the momentum back and forth, Western Kentucky starting with the momentum. Southern Miss got it back. Now Western Kentucky full in charge on the momentum side of things. Southern Miss with a two deep look, and the last thing you want to see with that two deep look is a split down the middle. And sure enough, that's what happened. And uh, Hayes Maple, in his linebacker position, couldn't get quite deep enough, and touchdown Western Kentucky. Haggerty will hold the punter. It's Munson on to complete the seven-point play, and he does. 31st point after attempt made on the season for Western Kentucky. 12.07 to play. Second quarter, take it a look as Ty Story steps up in the pocket and delivers a strike to Pearson. Oh, yeah, right down the middle, that two deep look. Like I said, that's the last thing you want is your safety is getting split outside, but good coaching with the wide receiver spreading out the defense of Southern Miss, and sure enough, right up the middle comes Pearson. Big well, play. Well, he leads this team in touchdown receptions. That's his sixth of the year. He had a 69-yarder in the last ball game two weeks ago against Arkansas up in Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium, and he has one here today for 64 yards to Jacourt Pearson, the redshirt junior out of Fort La out, out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. One thing about this Western Kentucky team, they don't lack confidence. I mean, don't let that six and four record deceive you. I mean, this is a very, very good football team. And uh, they just had a couple tough losses this season in Conference USA against some really good teams though out there in the East, Florida Atlantic and Marshall, but um, they're as good as anybody in Conference USA. Boy, and they have silenced this crowd. This stadium is at a halt at the moment here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi today. Tyson Helton's crew off to a good start in their first trip to Hattiesburg. This will be Munson to kick it away. And he has pushed this one to Watkins five yards deep in the end zone. No return, a touchback for Corey Munson. Let's see if the Southern Miss offense gets back to some of the things we expected early on during the week. And that's testing this secondary with some deep nine routes. And they've had success with, with Tim Jones and Quez almost has one earlier. so. Don't be surprised they go back to that just to try to get some of this momentum back. This has been a Western Kentucky style of game. They've had a time of possession type drives in that opening quarter. They do hit one big play in that 64 yard touchdown pass to Pearson just a moment ago. We're gonna make a D lineman check out. That was Jeremy Darvin who was the season starter, injured, came out. He was replaced by Jalen Madden. Madden is who just checked in for Western Kentucky. And there you take a good look at Jack Abraham for Southern Miss. Abraham going up top under pressure, and guess who? D'Angelo Malone with another sack. That's going to be his 10th sack of the season. He's 11th in the country in climbing. I mean, D'Angelo Malone, one of those guys, he was a wide receiver in high school. He was about 200 pounds. They beefed him up to play defensive end. And Sure enough, what a move. And anytime you're a defensive lineman and you have one of those numbers that normally running backs have, like a number 10 or what have you, you know you're an athlete. And he's arguably, pound for pound, the best athlete on the field today. Abraham, a handoff. This is Harris. Boy, look at this guy. He has got it up to the 25-yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage after the sack goes to Michael Harris. And Southern Miss wants to go in a hurry up tempo here. Yeah, this offense has to get the Michael Harris involved. He's the kind of the key that makes things go and trying to get him in the open space. Don't be surprised. Some swing passes, what have you. Uh, Michael Harris getting more and more involved here. Well, the look Western Kentucky's given is a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Top of the screen, that's Watkins, the receiver who's been kind of quiet so far for Southern Miss. And Abraham will throw a pass incomplete here to the near sideline. Pressure again on Abraham, and if you're going to stop this Southern Miss offense, you're going to have to do it with pressure in the face of their leader and quarterback, Jack Abraham, and that's exactly what Western Kentucky got on that offensive possession. You don't see Abraham really get pressured a whole lot during the season. I mean, he's rarely on his back, but this is a unique defensive front. 
that uh, Western Kentucky has. And sure enough, what they did right there, they brought Kyle Bailey off the middle linebacker blitz to create even more pressure. Yeah, it's only an offensive line who's given up 14 sacks on the year. Now make it 15 with that sack by Malone. And here's a ball that's going to hit the Western Kentucky player. That's 22 for Western Kentucky, Kadarvion Myers. And that is going to be a costly mistake to the Hilltoppers. They'll have to put their defensive unit right back out onto the field. Everett with that targeting tight punt as he just kind of line drive kicked it, playing for the bounce as you see it here, and it hits right off the backside of Myers. Yeah, one of those, but one cool note about that play right there, the guy who made the fumble recovery is Devin Thomas, the son of one of the greatest Southern Miss football players of all time, Adelius Thomas, who was actually on the cover of ESPN the magazine. I had the pleasure of playing with his father, and I was truly blessed to be on the same field. So uh, good genetics right there and a great play for Golden Eagle fans to know that Thomas name. Well, Southern Miss gets the first turnover on the ball game, and they'll have to capitalize on it here. Football at the 44-yard line of Western Kentucky. This is a handoff to big Steven Anderson, and he is tackled by the foot. I think that was Bailey, 36, Kyle Bailey, the middle linebacker, who we've seen now make two offensive stops as you take a look at Anderson there. Oh, I tell you what, when Anderson comes up, you have to bring it to bring a guy like that down, but Bailey's not scared, that's for sure. He's making a lot of plays today. Other miss now quickly to the line. They're kind of using that tempo of Buster Faulkner's offense. See Abraham checking off a lot right here, adjusting to that Western Kentucky front. Other miss wanted a late substitution, and that's going to be an infraction. That's an illegal substitution. We've got the look here, just seven rushing yards so far for Southern Miss, 71 passing yards. The yardage game being dominated by Western Kentucky so far early in this ball game. You take away that big play by Southern Miss, I mean, they really haven't moved the ball. <laughs> yeah, just 10 Legal yards if you take that big play away. On the offense, player came inside the numbers, ran off the field, he cannot do that. Five-yard penalty, he made second down. So quite a lengthy explanation by Billy Williams. That was a little mix-up along this Southern Miss sideline. They were wanting to possibly change personnel groupings. And Marquise McCoy came off the sideline onto the field after the offensive unit had already been set, which would cause the illegal substitution infraction. Nothing will give a coach more sleepless nights than sloppy penalties. You saw Coach Hop having a hard time keeping a straight face right there. Abraham calls for it. Looking to go up top, he's got time. This will be delivered a strike. That is caught, 13. Neil McLaurin on senior day. The senior with the pass reception. Boy, he's right at the first down marker, and they'll indicate that it's going to be a first down for Southern Miss. But you saw right there, number 10, right underneath the pass. That's D'Angelo Malone. They even drop him back in the coverage, so that's one heck of a throw by Abraham. Pinpoints to McLaurin to get over the outstretched hands of the big 6-4 defensive end who dropped back in the coverage. Well, he was the nation's leading passer as far as completion percentage a year ago. He's right up there again. That was at 73% a year ago. Here goes Harris. Harris gets to the outside in a strong run by the Michael Harris. That's the longest rushing play of the day for Southern Miss. Oh, yeah. We just said they have to get the Michael Harris involved more because he is the key that makes this engine go. Um, you got so many weapons on the outside and Watkins, Adams obviously out today, but Harris is, is just as talented as anybody. You got to get him the ball. Look at this play out to Tim Jones, and Jones knocked off his feet. Good pursuit made by Kyle Bailey, the middle linebacker, also in on the stop, Antoine Kincaid. And look at this play design, play action to Harris and a roll out to Jones. Man, the coaches love Tim Jones. And like I said, they call him the bodyguard of that wide receiver core. He's somebody you want if you're in an alley fight. And uh, a lot of times you don't think of the wide receivers as being, you know, real tough, slug them guys. But Tim Jones is one of those guys. Yeah, he leads this team in receptions. You know, Watkins makes the highlights. Jones just makes the catches. Abraham in the shotgun and a handoff. This is to Michael Harris. And Harris will spin forward. But boy, that's Kyle Bailey again on the stop. The middle linebacker, the junior out of Carrollton, Georgia. Bailey's been everywhere so far for Western Kentucky. Oh, he has. We called Malone's name a lot. We knew he would, but Bailey's starting to get into the mix now, leading the team in tackles and sure enough leading him today in tackles. Quick out. This is the McLaurin. McLaurin making one move. He'll have the first down. Will McLaurin. McLaurin, how about this statistic for him? 
the only player to attempt another pass for Southern Miss this season is the former quarterback out of Laurel, Mississippi, and Neil McLaurin. He's one for one for a touchdown this season. Jason, where do you find this stuff, man? Great stat right there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have Googled and found that one. Well, look at this. Here's D'Angelo Malone right into the face. Well, they didn't go with a read that time. Right into the face of Jack Abraham for another tackle for loss. As Abraham pulls it out the belly to Michael Harris. Watch how quick he is back here. Oh, yeah, Malone's super fast right there. And big Jalen George there to clean it up. I mean, they're really good up front. Um, they do so much with Malone. You've seen him drop back in the coverage. Uh, he can play the run, play the, play the pass. I mean, definitely a next level pro guy. And he's working on that matchup we talked about in the open. That's Malone versus Dorbeck at the moment. Abraham, a pass over the middle, and it is. Well, they call it a catch and a fumble. That's what they're saying. It's a live football picked up here by Western Kentucky, and they're trying to take it back out across the 45 yard line. That's going to be Trey Meadows, who I believe picked that football up for Western Kentucky. Yeah, that's who it is, is Meadows. And here we've got some pushing and shoving going along, along the far sideline where the coaches are going to have to get the team back in their box for the Hilltoppers. But at the moment, they're calling a reception and a fumble. we got another late penalty here. So a play afterwards. Tempers flaring for sure, but I want to see this replay because as you know, just the tip of the ball has to cross that, that white line right there. And from my angle, it seemed like it did cross over the goal line. Um, so it, this will be an interesting replay. Here we go. Here's another look. So yeah, you so, see. So Watkins completes the pass. I, I think they're going to have to possibly call this one an overturn and call it a touchdown. We'll see. As you know, the evidence has to be undisputed. And from that angle, possible dispute. Uh, maybe there's a better angle that shows it right on the goal line. Well, you know, the ruling is a catch and a fumble. So if he completes the catch and he breaks the goal line, then that's all he needs, right? So that's going to be, yeah, I mean, Watkins is right there along that line. Boy, it's all the way down here in the far end. I mean, they're, they're ruling it essentially a catch first, which allowed Meadows to return this. Yeah, very tough call right here. I mean, from my perspective, you saw his right foot was in the end zone, making you think part of the football might have crossed the goal line. I mean, if, if it's ruled a catch, what the ball needed to do was cross the goal. So this is going to be a very interesting call with a heated fan base right now ready to jump on the referees. Here's Billy Williams. The ruling on the field is a catch and a fumble recovered by the defense. The ball was returned after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the original offense. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the return. First down, Western Kentucky. That's number 68's first. You get another look at this, but you see the right foot in the end zone. And he comes kind of out in the field of play. And actually, not in the end zone. So we're getting a much better look at it now. It, this one's too close. But like you said, it has to be undisputed evidence. And really, Jason, is that undisputed evidence that the ball did cross the goal line? I don't, I don't know. It was Deontay Ruffin who knocked the football loose out of the hands of Watkins. So they're going to take a look. We're going to have another look at this one today. This is a big point in this ball game because Southern Miss is trying to tie it up here. They'll get the football to start the second half as well. We still have 647 to play in the second quarter. With the penalty on Bryce Foxworth, it would be Western Kentucky ball if the play stands at the Golden Eagle 38-yard line. And here's one more look at it. This is Watkins. No, crossing the field. One thing as a coach you won't like about this play, though, is Quez did kind of give up on the play a little bit. I mean, they tell you to finish through the through the play, and he kind of slowed up a little bit and uh, thinking he had the touchdown. Well, sure enough, I mean, he, this is very, <laughs> very disputable that, it, that the call's right. Here's our referee. The rule in the firm field is confirmed. First down. Western Kentucky. Like I said, the, the replay has to be undisputed. And, you know, from that angle that we had, you can't really see if the ball did cross the goal line or not. Well, it's in the far end zone. It's in the north end zone here at M.M. Roberts Stadium, which is the furthest away from all cameras that we've got here. And so I just don't know that with that video evidence that you could say Watkins crossed the goal line. 
Wow, huge change of pace in this game. I mean, Southern Miss was getting some of that momentum back. Now they got their backs on the ropes. This will be a big offensive possession in this first half for the Hilltoppers. They've got an opportunity to capitalize and really put themselves in control of this football game at the moment. They'll leave it in the belly of Walker here. And Walker is going to be tackled down. Yeah, you hear the fans right here. Delmon Landry got into the backfield and was basically <laughs> brought to the ground. Uh, the refs clearly missed a holding call right there. You can see the replay right here. Number 17, Landry storming up the field and more or less pulled down. I mean, if you ask me, that's a hold, but I guess the refs didn't think so. Santrell Latham, the middle linebacker, in in place of Rakeem Booth. They've got two backup linebackers in for this Golden Eagle defense. Both Swayze Bozeman and Rakeem Booth are out of this ball game at the moment. Here's a pass completion to Lucky Jackson, and Jackson gonna move the sticks again. That is Lucky Jackson's fifth pass reception so far of this football game. Yeah, Lucky Jackson's one heck of a player, and these little hitch routes are killing this Southern Miss defense. They're playing this soft zone. They may have to step up and play some tighter man right there, but Lucky Jackson, I mean, earlier this year, he had a Western Kentucky record of 16 catches versus Marshall, so very capable receiver right there. In both their losses this season in Conference USA, he showed up. He also had nine receptions, 194 yards, in their loss to FAU. Pearson across the formation and a one-handed catch by Jernigan down to the 21-yard line. Boy, what a catch by Quinn Jernigan. Wow, just outstretched hands. That's one of those highlight sports center possible top 10 plays. If, uh, if you ask me, I mean, look at this catch. Does he have stick him on, you think, Jason? I mean, uh, uh, they need to check him for stick. Boy, he actually bobbled it and regained it. We missed that call from our referee, Billy Williams. Yeah, the fan base pretty unhappy right now. I mean, the call against Watkins, not calling that a touchdown, and then the, the blatant hold not called in the backfield to play before this. And momentum swinging right now. You know, one thing to remember, too, Southern Miss is now without their two linebackers as well as their leader at free safety in Shannon Showers, and you're seeing Ty Story take advantage of it so far through the air for the Hilltoppers. Looking here to Jernigan, and he's got it. A dime again from Ty Story to Quinn Jernigan. And all of a sudden, Western Kentucky on top, 20 to 7 in the Rock. Wow, what a play, an accurate throw right there. Um, we talked about Lucky Jackson earlier in the game. He's made a lot of plays, but sure enough, who's stepping up is Jernigan. I mean, they've got weapons on this field. I mean, and they can score a lot of points, as you know, drop 45 in Arkansas, and now uh, 21 in the first half against it's a good, pretty good Southern Miss Nasty Bunch defense. Ty Story couldn't go and hand it to Quinn Jernigan any better than he threw it that time. Good snap, good hold on the extra point. And Western Kentucky has come into Hattiesburg, and they have taken control of the game. 21 to 7. Hattiesburg, Mississippi, 21-7, Western Kentucky. They have come into Hattiesburg and taken control of this football game. Here's a look from Ty Story to Quinn Jernigan. This is Jernigan's first pass reception of the year, Marshan, on the replay. Yeah, all game we've seen these little five-yard hitch routes, and what that does is kind of lulls the secondary to sleep. Well, sure enough, Jernigan gets behind the secondary, who kind of stepped up right there with a big touchdown. Great pinpoint throw by, by Story. So the momentum clearly on the Hilltoppers' sideline. Tyson Helton, the first-year head coach. They come in 7-3 and three overall. They lost their 6-4 and four overall, excuse me. And a hanging kick here. Taken by Watkins. Watkins trying to do something with it. He is knifed down. He lost the football as well. He was upended. That was a nice tackle made by A.J. Braithwaite. One of the fun aspects of watching a football game, or any sports in particular, is kind of the ebb and flow of momentum. I mean, we've seen some serious momentum switches here. Early on, Western Kentucky came out. Southern Miss answered back. Now, momentum's completely back in the Hilltoppers' favor. So you hear the explanation from 
our referee Billy Williams. Now Western Kentucky six in four. Southern Miss seven in three coming into this ball game. The Hilltoppers, boy, they have come in and executed both offensively and defensively. You hold this offense of Southern Miss to seven points so far in a ball game. You've done something as a defensive unit. Just 126 total yards of offense for Southern Miss. And like we said, half of that 126 is the big 68-yard play early on in the game. This is a handoff. This is to Michael Harris. Harris across the 25 up to the 29-yard line. Boy, this crowd knows when he touches it, he can go the distance every time. Good play call right there, getting Harris up the middle. Uh, you got to get him the ball. I keep saying that. It's in the first quarter and now the second quarter. I mean, he's so good at space. And what that does, that'll free up your wide receivers, Watkins and Tim Jones on the outside, maybe for another deep ball. Well, he got a great block from his tight end, Ray Ladner. That's the man in motion set to an H-back position now. Hand off again, Harris. Harris. Going to be stopped here, shy of the 30-yard line, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. That was a nice tackle made. That was Devin Key, a free safety for Western Kentucky. Oh, yeah, Devin Key is a heck of a playmaker on that defense. Earlier this year, he had 11 tackles versus Florida International. And you saw him with a big pass breakup, too, earlier in the game with Quez Watkins on that deep ball. So every time you tackle the Michael Harrison space, uh, you're making things happen. Yeah, Key was the defensive Conference USA player of the week for his performance against Arkansas. Abraham under all kinds of pressure. He's going to throw it here to Harris, who wasn't expecting it yet. And that pass falls incomplete, third down and nine. And this Southern Miss offense that's been so good, the uh, Conference USA leader in passing offense, really been kind of out of rhythm. Abraham, 7 of 11 for 108 yards, but... You just kind of feel that this game is being won right now on the defensive line by the Hilltoppers. Oh, absolutely. We've called so many names on this Hilltopper defense right now. I mean, we talked about D'Angelo Malone all week, but right now Juwan Jones with the big pressure from the other side. And we said Kyle Bailey's name several times in that linebacker position. Abraham looking to throw. He will. Downfield, is that caught by Watkins? It is. He caught it. That is Abraham's. Second favorite target on this team behind Tim Jones, the leader of this team in receptions, but that's Conference USA's most dangerous man. Great pitch and catch right there. I mean, uh, Abraham to Watkins, one of the best duos in all of Conference USA. But I tell you what, Jack Abraham earned his scholarship right there. When you have D'Angelo Malone breathing down your throat and you still step up, make the throw, I mean, wow. <laughs> Good job, Jack. Abraham, just a red-shirted junior. But he is such a veteran presence in that pocket. Here's another completion to Watkins, who will have to be tackled down. They're showing him a lot of zone looks. That's 91 dropping back, or 90, excuse me, dropping back into coverage there. That was Jalen George. And so they're showing, they're trying to show Jack a lot right now, Marchand, trying to disguise coverages, dropping some of these defensive linemen back into packages like that. And Abraham so far now 9 of 13. Yeah, definite chess match going on here. Kind of the game plan for Southern Miss was to stretch that Western Kentucky secondary with some deep balls. Now you see a lot of crossing runs. Four wide receivers set for the Golden Eagles. This is a handoff to their thumper and Kevin Perkins. Perkins will barrel his way forward, get really close to a first down for Southern Miss. He was ridden down by the middle linebacker, 36, Kyle Bailey. Yeah, two absolute studs in the backfield as far as hard to bring down. Guys who can get you the tough yards, and that's Kevin Perkins and Steven Anderson. You see Perkins right there, who they really needed this year to step up after some early injuries in their backfield. And he has a long rush of 79 as well. Don't let the size fool you. He's six foot, 220. He was junior college teammates with Jack. Abraham as well. Here's Perkins knifing through the line. Perkins kind of barreling his way forward across the 30-yard line of Western Kentucky down to the 29. Yeah, so many weapons on this Southern Miss offense. I mean, when Perkins gets involved, he's kind of the forgotten guy. I mean, because you have so many skill players you talk about, and then all of a sudden up the middle, Perkins is just pounding at you. And you respect a guy like this. He didn't come into this season expecting much playing time at all behind Mosley and Anderson. But due to the way his practice habits have occurred and then what he's done in ball games, here you see him all of a sudden kind of taken uh, alongside to Michael Harris in the Southern Miss rushing attack. Oh, absolutely. Abraham calls for it up top. Looking to Watkins, can't make the catch. Watkins had some contact, 
That was Devin Key who was down there with the coverage, the free safety, no call. Yeah, great coverage right there by Devin Key. Uh, you rarely see Abraham and Watkins not hook up when the ball's in Watkins' hands, but sure enough right there. And great move right there. You don't see that a lot by defensive backs when their backs turn. They sometimes seem to forget to turn their head. Well, he did right there at the last minute because if you don't turn your head, that's pass interference. So great, great coaching on Devin Key right there. And that's probably what didn't get the penalty flag thrown. His head turn is probably why the official didn't call pass interference. Thanks. Second and 10. This is a big moment in this ball game. Southern Miss will get the football to start the second half. Here's a handoff to Perkins for about three yards. We're going to get into some clock management situation here for head coach Jay Hobson with a running clock with 105 to play in this first half and the football inside the 30 yard line. Yeah, definitely have to get a sense of urgency on that Southern Miss offensive side of the ball right now with under a minute. This is a big third down. Southern Miss in third downs today, just two of six. Abraham, play action pass, that's thrown behind Watkins. Coverage was applied by the middle linebacker, Kyle Bailey, who is right in that throwing window, and that is gonna give us a fourth down situation, and they're gonna trust the freshman kicker, Andrew Stein, who's 16 of 19 in field goal attempts with a long of 46 on the season so far for Southern Miss. Yeah, kudos to this Western Kentucky defensive front right now. I mean, you rarely see Jack Abraham off, but he's had a few passes behind receivers, timing routes not go right like you just saw right there. So this brings up this field goal situation for Southern Miss, but definitely need to get these points on the board. This will be a 44-yard attempt off the foot of Stein. And he has pushed it to the right. A missed field goal for Andrew Stein, and we'll be back with more Conference USA football from Hattiesburg. And we're back in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, M.M. Roberts Stadium this afternoon. Jason Baker, Marshan, Kenny on the call with you. And Marshan in the commercial break just a moment ago, we explained maybe why that offense possession was so big for Southern Miss. This is a Western Kentucky defense that has allowed 78 points for the season, but only 57 points in second halves of their last nine ball games. That's an average of only six points a half in the second halves of the ball games over the last nine games of this football season. And uh, if Western Kentucky can get a score here, they just would have to be absolutely thrilled with their performance yeah, in the first half. They're a second-half football team, man. So if they put other points on the board right here somehow, I mean, Southern Miss's chances are really falling down. They're going to leave it in the belly of their running back, Walker, who is knifed down by Ty Williams. They may be happy up 21-7 to here in the Rock this afternoon. They have put this crowd to sleep at the moment. They have just absolutely killed the crowd noise in this building today. Call me crazy not to criticize, but I'm really not big on kind of killing the killing the clock here. I mean, I really don't get it. You're on the road. You've got two timeouts. The clocks are ticking away. Well, and you've hit a big play already in this ballgame. Now they'll swing it out to Lucky Jackson here. Jackson breaks a tackle, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Hilltoppers up to the 38-yard line with 11 seconds left. Maybe get into position to at least throw it up for a Hail Mary or maybe get in the field goal position. Lucky Jackson, six receptions in this first half. He doesn't have a whole lot to show for, just 29 yards. It's only a four-yard average per catch. Timeout called by seconds. Southern Miss here. 30 seconds of left. Jay Hobson begins to speak to his defensive football team and he's probably beginning to kind of explain scenarios happening here with what possibly Western Kentucky could do with two timeouts left in their pocket here in this first half and only 11 seconds before the break. Oh, absolutely. And the topic we just hit on with Western Kentucky being a second half team, there is no doubt he's stressing a sense of urgency. You have to make a stop right here. You know, because the second half is going to be tough enough to get, get back on top against this Hilltopper football team. And how about Ty Story's opening half of football today? 15 of 23, 208 yards, two touchdowns. He's got a passer rating of 169.9 for the trigger man. He was a Manning Award National Quarterback of the Week. That was for his performance against Arkansas. That performance two weeks ago, he was 22 of 32 for 213 yards, a touchdown. He had a long pass of 69 yards. He's dropped a dime already today in this one to Quinn Jernigan as well as to Jacor Pearson. 
Story with time, and this is, boy, that was nearly picked off. Mitchell went for the hit. He probably could have had the interception as that pass was going out to Quinn Jernigan, who caught that touchdown pass a moment ago. Oh, you love this aggressive play by Rashawn Mitchell. I mean, stepping up and making the pass break up right there. I mean, quick feet right there, and uh, really bringing up a tough situation. West Kentucky, too, possibly score before the half. So we'll see what they do. Essentially one play left in this half, six seconds on the game clock. They're going to hand it off. This is Gage Walker, their running back. Walker will cross the sticks, and that's how the first half is going to end. The Hilltoppers come in to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and M.M. Roberts Stadium, and they have taken control of a ball game on top today, 21-7 to in a pivotal bout in Conference USA. 21 to seven, Hilltoppers lead. We'll be back with more Conference USA action on ESPN. And we're back in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Jason Baker, Marchant, Kenny for you at M.M. Roberts Stadium in a first half that's been controlled by Western Kentucky Marchant and uh, their offensive line made their presence felt in the first quarter. And we've seen D'Angelo Malone, who we featured on the open, really make his presence with the pressure of Jack Abraham. Oh, I tell you what, the ebb and flow of this game, the way it's gone, I mean, it's in Western Kentucky's favor for sure. And a lot of the names that we mentioned leading up to this week have come to play. D'Angelo Malone is just fun to watch. I mean, we saw one play where he hawked down one of the fastest guys on the field uh, into Michael Harris. So he's making a lot of plays. Linebacker, of course, coming up. A lot of chess play, too, from both coordinators. You can tell Southern Miss was trying the deep ball that we thought they would do uh, early in the game. And then they tried some slanting routes as the game moved along. So but that the biggest play right now is that one Quez Watkins that they called the fumble and a catch that could have arguably maybe crossed the goal line, but just obviously inconclusive evidence. Yeah, and Western Kentucky took advantage of that. They go and score on the touchdown pass to Quinn Jernigan off that turnover, off essentially that turnover, and really swung this first half. And what we know about this Western Kentucky team, they've been awfully good in the second half. That could have been the turning point of this game. Oh, that's what's real scary for this Southern Miss football team right now. Western Kentucky is a second half team if there ever was one. I mean, there's a stat you said only giving up 57 points in the second half over the last nine games and also another stat in the fourth quarter uh, of, of several games they've given up no points so I mean it, it's going to be a struggle right here in Hattiesburg with Southern Miss to come back and right now to look at the scoreboard across Conference USA you've got UAB doing what Southern Miss needed them to do which is defeating Louisiana Tech at the half right now 13 to 7 you've got Marshall leading Charlotte. They're looking to wrap up the Conference USA Eastern Division with a win over Charlotte. Rice leading North Texas 20 to nothing. Old Dominion struggling against Middle Tennessee 14 to seven. UTEP leading New Mexico State 10 to seven. And ball game still yet underway today. Florida Atlantic taking on UTSA in San Antonio uh, and then Miami in a non-conference game against Florida International. That's a ball game just across the town. But a ball game here, 21 to seven, Western Kentucky. That might be the shocker of the Conference USA day uh, to this point here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So 21-7. Western Kentucky leads over Southern Miss in M.M. Roberts Stadium. We'll be back with much more halftime here in Hattiesburg. This is Conference USA. And we're back in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Jason Baker, Marchant, Kenny with you here this afternoon. A 21-7 ball game and a look at the first half stats, Marchant, where you see Ty Story having a day, 15 to 24 passing, and really his his ability to throw the ball downfield for Western Kentucky has been maybe the story, statistically speaking, for the Hilltoppers. Well, we knew he was one heck of a quarterback. I mean, the game he had against Arkansas was second to none, and, and the fashion that he did it, playing against his old team and uh, beating them up in SEC country. So you knew coming in here he was a heck of a quarterback, and he's made a lot of plays. I know one thing that uh, Coach Billings and, and the crew at halftime for that Southern Miss defense, they're going to have to plan to maybe get in his face a little bit more with some blitzes. You see him with 208 yards passing in that first half for Ty Story. He's actually out throwing Conference USA's best quarterback in Jack Abraham, passing the football the advantage, 208 
to 137. Really kind of the difference in this ball game. Western Kentucky uh, has the one turnover. Southern missed the one turnover. Western Kentucky capitalized on their turnover, was able to get points after that Quez Watkins catch and fumble. Yeah, it's crazy the ebb and flow of this game. I mean, technically the score could easily be 14 to 14. Now it's 21 to 7 thanks to that big fumble, and there was just not conclusive evidence to turn it over. I mean, from our angle, it could have been a touchdown, it could not have been a touchdown, but there just wasn't enough on the replay to turn it over. Hence, it's 21 to 7 now. The pride of Mississippi behind us here at MM Roberts Stadium, 21 7. Western Kentucky leads as we're here at the half in the Rock. You've got more Conference USA football action on ESPN. And we're back in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and a look at these first half highlights, Marchand. An opening possession for Western Kentucky. Methodical, methodical down the field. One of the time of possession leaders in Conference USA, and then you see the reverse here to Jacquez Sloan for their first score. Oh yeah, undisciplined play by the backside defensive end right there, hence the touchdown. But Jack Abraham in this offense is so talented. You knew they'd stretch the field against this Western Kentucky defense, Tim Jones going all the way to the house. And we seem like we had a back and forth football game, but Western Kentucky coming right back. I mean, story the way he's playing so far. I mean, a 169 passer rating or close to that. And uh, they do have a lot of weapons on that offense, but Southern Miss did get a little bit of momentum back right there with Adelius Thomas, his son, the former Golden Eagle great, uh, Devin Thomas. And then Southern Miss did try, try to take advantage of Quez Watkins across the middle, but the biggest play of the game right now, calling that a fumble and not a touchdown. I mean, that, the score could be 14 to 14. Instead, it's 21 to seven with this beautiful pass play from Western Kentucky. Yeah, and they throw the dime into Quinn Jernigan. That was his first touchdown reception of the season. That put him on top. 21 to seven here in the Rock in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. We'll return with second half action where Western Kentucky's defense has been one of the best second half defenses in all of the country. We'll see, can Southern Miss respond when we have more Conference USA football action on ESPN. Look here at M.M. Roberts Stadium this afternoon. 21-7, Western Kentucky leads Southern Miss. They have come down to Hattiesburg for their first time. This is just the third matchup all time. The last matchup took place back in 2015. That was in the Conference USA Championship. Western Kentucky is 2-0 against Southern Miss all time. And now Marchant, the storyline of this game will turn to a team that has been maybe one of the nation's best Second half defense is just surrendering 57 points over their last nine ball games and second halves. Now that the sledding gets tough for this Golden Eagle team, you would almost essentially believe Jay Hobson's crew, as you see him come out of the halftime locker room, has to feel a must score to open this second half. Yeah, this Western Kentucky defense is going to be really tough to score in the second half. A stat that we had noticed we talked about during the week, you love a defense that plays with a chip on their shoulder. I mean, these guys had zero defensive players on the preseason Conference USA team, and a lot of guys on that defense took offense to that, especially a guy like D'Angelo Malone, as talented as he is. So you, you see him play salty as the game goes along and expect nothing less today in the second half. So Southern Miss might have to get back to trying to stretch the field with Quez Watkins, Tim Jones, some of those guys, um, just to try to create plays because it's not going to be easy. Uh, just, just gaining points on this Western Kentucky team, that's for sure. As we look at the first half stats again, uh, and another notable, one thing is they played to a dead even in time of possession. Each team with 15 minutes of time of possession. We couldn't do that again if we tried. <laughs> uh, Western Kentucky an edge in rushing, an edge in passing, and of course then that equates to the edge in total yards. One of the things to, to highlight is the even battle and turnovers at the moment. Western Kentucky with one, Southern Miss, Southern Miss with one. What will happen? Western Kentucky is a team minus eight in the turnover department this year in terms of turnover ratio. So who will make the play in this second half from a turnover standpoint to maybe swing this game, whether it's Western Kentucky intercepting an Abraham pass in this second half or recovering a fumble, maybe to seal the deal, or can Southern Miss get a, a turnover from this Western Kentucky team that's been prone to do it in their two losses against FAU and Marshall, they were turnover prone. Can this, this Golden Eagle defense accomplish that? We're getting ready to see the Southern Miss offense to start this second half. Yeah, that one turnover by Southern Miss completely changing the game right now. And very controversial turnover. Possibly the ball was across the goal, but 
Just the inconclusive evidence. Underway here in the second half. This is Watkins. Boy, he could make this game turn on a hinge. Instead, a play made by Western Kentucky's coverage unit. That was the tackle made by number 11, Jaden Hunter. That's the Georgia transfer out of the University of Georgia who comes down and makes the stop. That's one thing about this linebacking course. Said during the week, they're really talented. I mean, you got a couple guys who transferred from Louisville and Jaden Hunter right there transferring from Georgia. So, I mean, some, they were big time recruits, made their way to Western Kentucky now. And uh, they're, when you make a play like that in the open field against Quez Watkins, you got to be one heck of a talented guy. And Jaden Hunter really made one heck of a play right there. Well, Southern Miss breaks their offensive huddle. They're getting the help they need in Birmingham, but they're not doing what they need to do, which is defeat Western Kentucky at the moment. They'll start this second half off with a handoff to DeMichael Harris and another tackle made. That was by the defensive back, 31, Antoine Kincaid. Yeah, you mentioned the Birmingham score a lot tacked down to UAB right now. Major implications on this game, but if Southern Miss doesn't handle their business, it really doesn't matter. A good look at Jack Abraham, his numbers in that first half, 9 of 15, 130 yards total, one touchdown pass. He has not thrown an interception. He does such a great job of protecting the football, just 10 interceptions on the season. Half his yards, though, from that one bomb to Tim Jones, so really not very productive through the air right now. Abraham had motioned Harris out of the backfield. Now he's going to have to throw it away. Pressure again applied by the Hilltoppers. This is going to be a late hit. There's going to be a penalty throw, possibly a roughing the passer penalty. That wasn't a good move from the down lineman that time. That was for the number 56 right there. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 56 of the defense. 15 yard holding, automatic. We don't have a 56 on the, the yeah, We don't have a 56 <laughs> on the roster for Western Kentucky that we were given today. Well, I'll tell you what, he might not find himself on the roster after plays like that, because that really hurts you. I mean, you've got Southern Miss backed up deep. you got all the momentum. Well, sure enough, Southern Miss out at the 30-yard line. Now. And let's, let's see if that penalty doesn't give some momentum into the Golden Eagle territory. I mean, that was a big penalty call. I mean, Abraham's throwing that football away. He's not even throwing the pass downfield at that point. Harris motions over to his right. To Michael looking for some space and boy it's been tough sledding against a rushing defense that surrenders 138 yards per per game given up and uh, today just uh, what 60 yards total rushing thus far for the Golden Eagle offense. Well, Jason being an old ex linebacker like I am I love good linebacker playing Kyle Bailey reading that play right there and making the stop. We've heard his name a lot today. Yeah, Kyle Bailey's got eight total tackles so far in this football game from his mic position in this defense. Up top, this is the Neil McLaurin, and it is. Is that intercepted by Kincaid? It is. They're going to say the 11th interception of Abraham is picked off by Antoine Kincaid, his second interception of the season for the Hilltoppers. And we mentioned turnovers, and right out the gate, a turnover for Southern Miss. Yeah. We Thought we'd see Southern Miss try and stretch the field, and they did right there. But your safety stayed home and made a great play over the top. Austin Kincaid, Valdosta, Georgia native. Watch this play. Boy, that's Stuffing the attempt by Southern Miss. Boy, and that is what you want from your free safety. Some contact on McLaurin. McLaurin didn't high point the football. Instead, Antoine Kincaid turned Southern Miss over. And here comes Ty Story with a 14-point lead. And now the football for Western Kentucky. They're going to leave it in the belly of Gage Walker. Walker fighting his way forward. Another tackle made by Ty Williams. But that's, if you're Southern Miss, that's not what you want is your corner having to make a lot of plays on rushing attempts. That means a lot of guys are getting blocked and he's getting into the second level and his secondary having to make the stop. Still a lot of time in this football game, but just the way the ebb and flow of things right now, I mean, it's hard to really, you know, Look at Southern Miss and be like, man, they're, they're going to get back in this game. Western Kentucky loves to run the ball. They're doing what they want to do. Ran the ball 47 times against Arkansas. Walker stopped for a loss. Guess who? Number 12, DQ Thomas coming up to make the stop for Southern Miss. Yeah, fiery competitor DQ Thomas, the top NFL prospect on this team. I mean, with Mitchell 
and Swayze Bozeman going down. You need kind of that linebacker nickel play to really step up. And nobody does it better than DQ Thomas on this Southern Miss defense. Well, if Southern Miss is going to get back in this football game, they're going to have to do it on third downs. They're going to have to win the third down battle. Western Kentucky just three of seven on third down in this football game. Ty Story across the middle. That's complete. That's Jacor Pearson. He'll pay for it, but he has the first down. Kyle Hemby with the stop, but not before the Hilltoppers pick up the first down. Some of the most impressive plays I'll ever see in football is a crossing route by a receiver gets smacked but holds on to the football. Heck of a play right there getting the first down by Pearson. Yeah, Hemby was right there, but a better job by the receiver to hold on to it. Pearson's had that touchdown reception in this football game as well out of the hand of Ty Story today. That's Walker to his right. That's Pearson in motion. Play action fake all kinds of time. Story will swing it out. This is to Pearson. Look at that move. Oh, boy, is he rocked. That's the Mario Smith, the big nose tackle hustling out. The senior three-year letter winner from Canton High School. Man, another favorite play to see is when the big guys down in the line pursue the play and make a big hit. These guys are coached to do that, streamline to the ball. And the Mario Smith coach, Tim Billings, the defensive coordinator for Miss, lights up about him. He says he's the best representative of what the nasty bunch is all about. Yeah, he said he's going to give a look to the NFL, and then he wants to become a highway patrolman in Mississippi. And look at the Mario Smith again. Making a tackle for a loss. Boy, he has just come knifing through that defensive line to make the stop. Oh, he's, the a, he's a fun defensive lineman to watch. When he gets fired up, I mean, you can see the crowds into it. Uh, like I said, one of the best representatives of the nasty bunch era. Boy, DeMario gave us a quote earlier this week in describing his head coach, Jay Hobson. He said he's not just a football coach. He's a life coach and like a second father to me here on Senior Day. Demario Smith having a day. Big third down again for the Hilltoppers. Third and 10. They just moved the chains a moment ago on third down. Story with his legs being chased by Hayes Maples. What a job by the redshirt freshman linebacker to pursue Ty Story and only pick up a minimal gain and force a fourth down in the punting unit for the Hilltoppers out. Yeah. Tim Billings, defensive coordinator, Southern Miss right there, pulling out all the stops. I love those looks when sometimes the defensive linemen aren't down. All 11 players on the defense were standing up, gave it a tough look for Story, and sure enough, got pressured out of bounds, brings up the fourth down, but great play by Hayes Maple in the open field. Really needed to make that stop. John Haggerty going to try to pin Southern Miss deep inside their territory. A hanging punt here that is angled toward the sideline, out of bounds at the 11. Great job by the punter, John Haggerty Jr., the junior out of Sydney, Australia, who averages 46 yards a punt. Good job there. It'll be Southern Miss, 89 yards. M.M. Roberts Stadium as the sun begins to set here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. 21-7 Western Kentucky as the Southern Miss Offensive unit comes out for the Golden Eagles. Wanted to give a special kind of feel-good story. Buster Faulkner, the offensive coordinator for Southern Miss, first-year offensive coordinator, tweeted out this week to his high school coach, Cecil Flo, and the impact that he made in his life. Cecil is a longtime Georgia high school coach going into the Georgia Athletic Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Wanted to put that into the broadcast as Tim Jones picks up a pass completion. No, I love stories like that, man. Coach Hobson on the sideline here. Kind of one of the players. Coach, really a family type atmosphere. So Abraham with the football in the shotgun. As he'll call for it. Trips formation to the top of your screen. Watkins is in the middle of that formation. That's been a change today. Remember, Southern Miss without their third leading receiver in Jalen Adams who is not even dressed in uniform today. A handoff to Perkins. And that's just a one yard gain, third down and five. And Western Kentucky is really 
really dominated this line of scrimmage so far in this football game today. Well, I mean, we've said it several times, too. Them being a second-half football team and being really good on the defensive side of the football, I'm a little bit surprised by that play call right now and just how methodical and slow the Southern Miss offense seems to be coming out the huddle. I mean, there has to be a sense of urgency pretty soon. I know it's not over. It's 21-7, to but um, – they, they've really got to step it up. Well, one thing they can do is they can score in a hurry, and a lot of it's with that man crossing the formation. That's Quez Watkins. Look at Abraham. Jack Abraham on the slide up to the 27-yard line. He doesn't do it a lot. 62 rushes on the season for 105 yards, but that was the longest rushing play from scrimmage today, and it comes from that man, Jack Abraham. Yeah, Jack Abraham is one of those guys not known as a dual threat quarterback, but we see it all the time, deceiving speed. You know, the secondary does their job, but sure enough, he'll just tuck the ball and run. He's done it a lot this year. And he wisely slides down. Remember, not another quarterback on this roster has attempted a pass this season, not named Jack Abraham. So they've got to protect him. He'll slide down. A first down in 10, approaching halfway through this third quarter. Abraham up top. That's Watkins. No, incomplete. That was coverage applied on that far side. That was 29. Beanie Bishop with the coverage, the redshirt freshman out of Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Jack Abraham, Quez Watkins will challenge every defense in America. So you knew you'd see some deep balls today, but what a breakup right there by Beanie Bishop. And what a great name, Beanie Bishop. Heck of a play. Yeah, Beanie with uh, the Hand right between Watkins' two arms. That was a great shot on that replay. Watkins just couldn't come down with it. Quez today, four receptions. He leads all Southern Miss receivers, but just 38 yards. His impact not been made so far in this ball game. Perkins over to the right of Jack Abraham. Abraham looking to go wide open down the field. That's Trevor Terry, the senior out of Long Beach, goes up and makes the catch. What a throw by Jack Abraham down the seam of the field. So many weapons at this Southern Miss receiving core. You rarely hear Trevor Terry's name, though. Well, sure enough, everybody else is covered. Who slips right up the middle is Terry. Great little throw there by Abraham. Trevor Terry's ninth reception of the season. That was good for 20 yards down the field. You like to see that out of a guy like Terry. I mean, he missed his first four games last year due to injury. So bouncing back, just good to be on the football field. Tim Jones in the slot here to the near side, bottom of your screen. So the Miss got to hurry. Three seconds on the play clock. They'll snap it at one and a handoff to Perkins and a tackle made. That's a tackle made by the linebacker Clay Davis, the Tennessee Tech transfer. Big Jalen George out of Atlanta in on that play as well. 6'2", 290, the senior holding down the fort. They'll go hurry up with the Golden Eagles. They're going up top again. This to Watkins, and that play cannot be made. Where well, they're allowing a lot of contact on that far side. They're attacking the red shirt freshman or the Golden Eagles. That's Beanie Bishop with the coverage again on that far side. Excuse me, actually, that's 26, Deontay Ruffin. He's the junior out of Kenner, Louisiana. Kenner, Louisiana. I'm a New Orleans guy. I definitely know where Kenner's at, so good job. Western Kentucky playing one-on-one -on, -one on the outsides. They've not had a lot of safety help. Right now, that's Kincaid. You see him backing up, standing on about the S of the Southern Miss. He's their strong safety. Two seconds on the play clock. This is a Southern Miss offense out of rhythm right now. Abraham throwing a back shoulder throw. That is wide and incomplete of Tim Jones. And I would tell you with the tone of this game and the feel of this game right now, Western Kentucky has just gotten this Southern Miss offense just out of sync, out of rhythm. And what they've really done to me is they've made Jack Abraham uncomfortable right now. Oh, absolutely. This defensive line, arguably the best one in Conference USA, probably the most talented guy on that line being Malone, who just applied pressure to Abraham right there. We call Malone's name a lot. We knew we would. But the way this game's going right now, it's six minutes left. Western Kentucky's a second-half football team, not giving up many points this year, especially over the last nine games in the second half. Southern Miss has the work cut out for him to uh, get back into this one. And a fake punt. This pass is going to be caught and a tackle made. What a play by Western Kentucky to get the stop as they threw it to Rayshun Mitchell on the fake punt attempt. And the tackle was made by A.J. Braithwaite, 
Jr. When we return, it'll be Hilltopper football from Hattiesburg. This is Conference USA football on ESPN. M.M. Roberts Stadium, 21-7. A look there at this crowd at uh, Southern Miss that is awfully quiet at the moment. Another look at that fake punt by Southern Miss. And Marchant, you love the call, but just a great play made by the Hilltoppers. I actually do like the call. Well set up, well drawn up, fake play. But wow, what a play by A.J. Breakway, the redshirt freshman, too. You love to see the young guy making plays. And some trickeration here. That's actually the backup quarterback, Kavarius Thomas, who will take the pitch and then wing it out to Ty Story, who actually has his second reception of the season for the Hilltoppers from his quarterback position. Yeah, Story is a heck of a talent, dual threat quarterback. I mean, like we said, he ran the ball 17 times against Arkansas, so trying to get him in a space, a very capable receiver and runner. So a pickup of six for the Hilltoppers after that trick play. This is Gage Walker there running back in a tackle made. That's the strong safety, Kyle Hempy. They call him a rover within Tim Billings' defense. He was an Iowa Western Community College transfer here to Southern Miss. Yeah, Kyle Hemby came up strong, an NFL prospect definitely, and that guy, Thorpe Nagurski nominee. Uh, you definitely love your secondary guys coming up making big stops like that. It was almost like he was on a blitz. He read the play immediately and made the stop from 10 yards deep in secondary. Well, we mentioned earlier in this third quarter that these third downs will become even larger as this ball game looms. We know that this is a Western Kentucky defense that doesn't give up a lot in the second half. This offense, can they continue to move the sticks? Story trying to get there, and he will not. He will be denied. That was Terry Whittington along with Santrell Latham, the sophomore linebacker out of Meridian High School. I don't know that we're talking enough about maybe the position players that are missing within this Golden Eagle defense. No Raheem Booth at the moment, no Swayze Bowman at the moment, and no Shannon Showers for Southern Miss here in this second half. And you see Latham there, just absolutely stuffed story. Yeah, Western Kentucky trying to take advantage of Booth being out the game because he's kind of your middle run stopper. But sure enough, that nasty bunch defense stepped up big time. Huge stop right there, too, because if Western Kentucky drives and gets in the scoring position, my goodness, that could be dangerous territory for this Southern Miss team in the second half and it's hard enough to score in Western Kentucky in the second half. The senior Ty Williams, the cornerback back deep to receive. John Haggerty Jr. set to punt it away for the Hilltoppers. A high snap. End over end kick. Williams calling for the fair catch. He will make it at the nine yard line. That's where the Southern Miss offense will take over when we return. This is. A defensive stop for Southern Miss. They have given the football back to Jack Abraham and this Golden Eagle offense. They'll stand 91 yards away from the end zone. But uh, Marchant, maybe the story of this game is the Western Kentucky's defense and the job they're doing against the trigger man for the Golden Eagles and Jack Abraham. Oh, absolutely. Abraham without that big 60-yard, play, eight-yard play to Tim Jones early in the game, he's got less than 100 yards passing. Boy, a lot of contact downfield. No call on an incomplete pass. They were going to DeMichael Harris on a wheel route out of the backfield. The coverage being applied by another linebacker within that Defense for the Hilltoppers, Clay Davis. Yeah, Clay Davis, a linebacker matchup with the Michael Harris. You, you like that every day if you're Southern Miss, but wow, Clay Davis showing some serious athleticism manning up on, on the Michael. And Abraham's just out of rhythm. There's no doubt about that. This defensive front for Western Kentucky has done what they've needed to do, which is make Abraham move a little bit today and just get out of sync. Well, Ab Abraham, a quick strike. This is the Watkins. He's a guy that can change this game on its axis in a minute. He'll have an eight-yard pickup here. Yeah, but you're right. Abraham has been a little bit rattled today, but what human being wouldn't be rattled with a guy like D'Angelo Malone out there? And you see what they're doing with Malone. They're kind of standing him up, walking him out, moving him all over the place. I mean, he's such a talented guy, creating a lot of looks and freeing up a lot of the other defensive linemen and linebackers for that Western Kentucky front. So it's going to set up a third and short here. 
for Southern Miss. Abraham will go under center for the first time, and we're going to have to have the previous play. A review. Exactly review. Yep, our referee Billy Williams tells us he's going to look at the spot of the football. I agree with this call because it seemed to me he did get the first down. Now that I look where they spotted it, I'm, I'm a little shocked with this third and short. Let's take another look at it. So here's Watkins. The line to gain is to the 19. Yeah, his foot comes out of bounds way past. You see the ball is probably, you know, past the first down marker when he goes out. Be interesting call here. Like we say, it has to be inconclusive or conclusive evidence for it to be and changed. And you know, the new rule in college football, so the referee, Billy Williams, actually doesn't get a look. We have a replay official who is here on site at M.M. Roberts, and he will take the look and make the call. So looks Watkins, like a first well, down right the football. there. Yeah, you I know I, that I, angle. That's a first down. Yep, that's, that's conclusive. What a great shot, guys, from the working the cameras for us. That's a great look at it. With that look, I would say that would move the sticks. And and look, I know right now it's it's still a third and one, and you would think that's manageable. But against this defensive front, this is a big play call to be able to give you a fresh set of downs oh, here. Oh, absolutely. The way this front's playing right now, I mean, we've called every name on the defensive front today, even some guys who don't get a lot of playing time. And then obviously their linebackers playing so well in Kyle Bailey. Yeah, D'Angelo Malone, that's the guy you want to watch. But the other guys, Jalen George, Jalen Madden, Jawan Jones, those three have played well today. We've called Jeremy Darvin's name. He was the original starter from their three technique side from their defensive tackle side and then I think maybe the guy on the hilltopper defense that has shined like a star today has been the middle linebacker Kyle Bailey boy we've seen him no, no. several times on open field tackles there we're looking into the replay booth that was a good shot here's Billy Williams with the call after review the really on the field stands third down the clock will start on my whistle I think you and I are 0 call. for 3 on instant but replay calls today call me crazy right there looked like a first down to me yeah there's the replay booth right there good shot at it there and that's the that's where the replay decision comes from well third and short look at that front for West of Kentucky stuffed in there expecting a sneak Abraham under center that's Tim Jones in motion they're going to leave it with Tim Jones and look at this Marshan he is dropped for a loss, guess who? Kyle Bailey, the middle linebacker who is having a day for the Western Kentucky Hilltopper defense. That's a loss of three on the play back to the 16. Great play by Bailey, but you know who disrupted the play was the backup nickel linebacker, Omari Alexander, and a great story about Omari Alexander. From kindergarten to 12th grade, never missed a day of school. You think there was some discipline in that household? My goodness. <laughs> Yeah, that's the red shirt junior out of Louisville, Kentucky. Actually transferred to Western from Eastern Kentucky. So another Hilltopper defensive stop here in this second half. Everett gets off a punt. This is to Cray. He will call for the fair catch, and Cray will make it at the 38-yard line. 39 is the official spot. That's where the Hilltopper offense, led by a guy who uh, I don't know that you would have gave the edge to Western Kentucky in quarterback play coming into this game, but at the moment, Ty Story has been the story. 17-26, 217 yards, two touchdowns, and I think the key in this one today, zero interceptions from their quarterback position. I'll tell you what, Jason, I'm not a good math guy alive, but I know passer ratings when they're 160, don't quite know what all goes into it, but I know that's good, and it's a lot better than Jack Abraham has right now with a 117 passer rating. So, yeah, the quarterback story is completely shifted from what we expected. I expected Jack Abraham to come here, light things up a little bit. And they've tried with some deep balls, but, I mean, this Western Kentucky defense is, is just showing off right now. And sure enough, I love when stats have substance to them because, you know, Western Kentucky giving up so few points in the second half, and they haven't given up any in this second half so far. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, since that opening ball game, they've had four games of zero points in a fourth quarter and uh, tackle made here to the tailback Gage Walker a nice stop that was DQ Thomas and Kyle Hemby where well, they've been alive in that secondary for Southern Miss you know the positive news for the Golden Eagles is you can score quickly the Southern Miss offense uh, actually number one in Conference USA in TD drives under two minutes they have 11 of those this season. So this Southern Miss offense is certainly not out of this football game, but the problem is Western Kentucky is built to play with a lead like this. They're a time of possession type team. They lead Conference USA in that statistical category. 
uh, and they can just be a little methodical with their run game. Here's a swing pass out to Jacourt Pearson on a slip screen. He's going to wind up a yard shy of the first down to Jacourt Pearson. Yeah, great play right there by Pearson, keeping his feet on the ground, keeping his head up, and almost getting that first down, bringing up a third and short situation. This is a very key down right now for Southern Miss. Look for him to stuff that middle and try to get some pressure up, up right through the centers and A-gaps. Well, Tyson Helton's ball club has come into Hattiesburg today, and they have really controlled this game really from the start, uh, if you ask me. Helton had a great quote after their UAB win. If a football player knows that he is loved and taken care of, he'll run through a brick wall for you. That's what he's asking this team to do in the Rock today. Here's Ty Story on a third and short. Does he have it? I don't know. They're going to depend on the spot. The mark this is, is short. The mark is short. Yeah, the Southern Miss turn this Western Kentucky offense back over again and make him have to punt this football away. Man, so much beef up front right there. Hard to move. We'll add it up to about 600 pounds of man at defensive tackle with the two tackles that were there at that spot. It's a great play by that Southern Miss defense forcing a a fourth down situation. That's Cole Spencer, a good shot of him there. The left tackle, 16 total starts in his Hilltopper career. Here's a punt that is going to hit and roll out of bounds off the foot of John Haggerty Jr. And it'll be up to the Southern Miss offense to respond back into this ball game with 48 seconds left in the third quarter. And Marchant, you can sense the urgency in our voices calling this game today for Southern Miss. If they're going to get back in, they got to get going for this Western Kentucky defense for the way that they play in this second half. That's a confident crew out there on the field right now for this Hilltopper defense. You already hit on that stat. We're about to get into the fourth quarter, and Western Kentucky, this defense has held four teams with no points in the fourth quarter this year. They're a second-half football team. So this Southern Miss offense, don't be surprised if they abandon the running game more or less and just try to air it out, uh, and they got the right people to do it for sure. But, wow, what a front this Western Kentucky has to try to throw on because, I mean, Malone, look at him right there, cocked in position, ready to get in that backfield already. Yeah, and they'll begin to get in more known passing down situations. Here's a handoff to Perkins, and Perkins is going to be stopped for only maybe a yard game, maybe not even that. And again, that defensive front, two sacks today. They're six in all of FBS in total sacks. They have 37 in 10 ball games so far for Western Kentucky. Yeah, that front four of them are just as good as anybody. You'll see that it's been to the rock this season. Jack Abraham changing the play. He has full authority to do so from offensive coordinator Buster Faulkner. Abraham, a bright young man, a Cosida All-American. And he will wing this out. That's caught by Watkins on an out route for the first down for Southern Miss. Oh, yeah, Malone breathing down Abraham's throat, but still able to make that pass to Watkins. That's a play they practice all the time. They stay after hours of practice and do this, these timing routes. And really, in Conference USA, not many people Let's do it better third than quarter. Abraham to Watkins. That's going to do it for three quarters of play tonight in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Western Kentucky in their first trip into this building has a 14-point lead. We'll return with the fourth quarter from M.M. Roberts Stadium. This is Conference USA Football on ES. Fifteen minutes is all that remain in this Conference USA pivotal matchup. And right now, Western Kentucky has controlled this game. The only touchdown for this Golden Eagle offense has been the 68-yard pass to Tim Jones. That was back in the first quarter, Marshan. And what we may be seeing from this Southern Miss offense, too, is, is the missing presence of Jalen Adams, their star slot receiver. Oh, yeah, ESPN.com had Jalen Adams, first-team All-American in the midseason uh, All-American poll. Wow, that's a fumble. Yes, it is, and an interception. That's Deontay Ruffin who's going to take it in. It was jarred loose from Marquise McCoy, and it's going to be called a fumble recovery from Deontay Ruffin. He will take it in for the Hilltoppers, and another look here. Yeah, heck of a play right here by this Western Kentucky defense, completely changing the pattern of this game now. <laughs> Tremendous deficit for Southern Miss against a West Kentucky team that's already super hard to score against. So they're going to take a look at this, and what they will determine, says referee Billy Williams, is was it a catch 
by Marquise McCoy. Marquise, a six foot four, 205 pound junior receiver out of Columbia, South Carolina. He had that football jarred loose, and yet from the live shot, it looked like Ruffin had got it off, off without it hitting the turf, but it actually bounced to the ground, which may have the, the benefit of maybe not calling this a catch. Does he complete the catch? Well, that's I'll hard. I'll tell you what, he, I don't think that's a catch. Looking at that, and we've, we haven't been good on these replays, no, though, we're, Jason. We're so, for so did I just? <laughs> we're 0 for tonight. Kyle, we're 0 for 3. Guess who, too? Guess who knocked that football loose? Kyle Bailey, their middle linebacker for this Hilltopper defense, absolutely put his helmet into the chest of McCoy. Yeah, forgive me for not breaking down that replay enough. I was too busy analyzing whether it was a catch or not. But yeah, once again, Kyle Bailey. I mean, we said his name so many times. You love it when your linebackers, who are usually your heart and soul of the defense, kind of the leaders, you know, step up and play really well. And so when you look at it, Marshan, at this point, Bailey has been a guy that essentially has benefited to his defensive line play. There we get a look into the replay booth. And here's the call. After review, the pass was incomplete. Therefore, it will be Southern Miss ball, the 27-yard line, second down. Please set the clock. Well, one out of about 15. five today is not too bad for you, Marshan. Can I call him or what, Jason? 1455, right. please. 1455. Well, Thank that you. that is an absolutely monumental overturn for Southern Miss because I, I'll be honest, even though much of this quarter left in this ball game. If you're the Golden Eagles and you give up that score, I don't I don't know that there's a comeback within them in this rock tonight. That still a two possession game here, still with 21-7 yeah, your score. No, that, that touchdown right there would have been nail in the coffin if you ask me. So a four wide receiver set three to the top of the, your screen. Look at this. Design quarterback draw by Jack Abraham. He'll slide down ahead of the sticks and he'll move the chains for this Southern Miss offense, and all of a sudden. You're seeing Jack Abraham's legs have to be a factor. And a few weeks ago when they went to Ruston to play Louisiana Tech, one of the bright spots of that game, even in loss, was Jack Abraham's ability to run the football when coverage was good on the defensive side of things. So you may see a little bit more of that because, I mean, this front of a very aggressive defense getting upfield, and Abraham might be open for some runs <laughs> down the field. Abraham does have a long rush of the season of 37 yards. Here he short arms one intended. That was Watkins, his intended target. Watkins has got six receptions in this game today, but just 59 yards. Western Kentucky has really done a good job on Conference USA's best at the wideout position. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they seem to always have somebody in Abraham's face today. I mean, he's not easily rattled, but when you have a front like this constantly putting pressure on you, there's really not much you can do from an accuracy standpoint. You really don't see Abraham short a ball like that to some of his best receivers like Watkins too. So it's really interesting that Story is out playing him today. Yeah, there you see the stats of the year for Quez Watkins. He leads Conference USA. He's one of the nation's best downfield. Here he is again, and he's got it. How about Quez going out of bounds? Quez Watkins with a big time play for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles and a penalty on the field. That's not going to stay. That call. Will not matter, it's defensive pass interference. They'll they'll take the play and a big time catch from Quez Watkins. That's how good Quez Watkins is. I mean, interfered with and making a big play right there. I mean, pass interference on the defense, number seven. Yeah, you have to see more of this on this other miss offense. Of you see pressure up the middle down. still like Western Kentucky's been doing, but Abraham pulled in the pocket. Knows he has a sure handed receiver and Watkins getting the foot down. Wow, what a catch and just to add to the highlight reel of a special career that he's had here in Hattiesburg. Yeah, he has the most plays of over 30 yards in all of Conference USA. That one was 28 yards on that pass completion from Abraham to Watkins. He could take over this game. He's got that kind of ability. Here's Perkins trying to fight through a tackle and can't. Clay Davis making the stop. The Sam a, linebacker for Western Kentucky. That's the second time we've called Clay Davis today. I mean, he showed some speed covering to Michael Harris earlier and then a big open field tackle right there or else Perkins would still be running. Well, Perkins has been the guy late in ball games. He's had a couple of big carries late in games lately for this Southern Miss offense. Trace Clopton, you see the sophomore center changing the pass protection for Southern Miss. This is Abraham. Jack down the field. This is... Yeah, what a catch. Tim Jones, what a catch by the Golden Eagle slot receiver. 
He had the touchdown reception earlier for Southern Miss, and he makes a big catch in traffic. Yeah, one of my favorite nicknames I've heard all season is about Tim Jones, just a tough guy at that wide receiver spot, the bodyguard of this wide receiving core is what they call him. And look at him across the middle making a tough catch. Well, that was coverage. In, that was in triple coverage. Abraham threaded the needle that time. You almost feel a score would get this crowd back in it. That's left here in M.M. Roberts Stadium. Abraham changing to play. Harris is to his right. And timeout on the field. So they're going to take a look and see if Tim Jones held on to this football. I, I saw no indication of a drop from the replay we saw just a moment ago. Well, I'm one for four, so let's see if <laughs> I can be two for five. Two for five here. Let's see, Tim. Here's another look. Got the ball there. Foot down. Boy, what a shot from our camera crew. I tell you yeah, what, what a production crew we have, huh? Absolutely. Nice. That's a catch. Kudos to the I'm guys two for on that shot. Calling it. Two for five, Jason. Yeah, this one won't be overturned. There's nothing indicating that he lost possession of that football on the way to the field. You know, all week I couldn't wait to watch a certain player, and that's D'Angelo Malone from Western Kentucky. We'll hear the referees about that. After the review, the real on the field of a catch is good first. First down. Yeah. I'm two for five. Miss. There we go. The, uh, but watching D'Angelo Malone, I mean, they had him out from his defensive end position on the number two receiver co out in coverage in space. I mean, the guy's 6'4", 230, covering a slot receiver. I mean, that guy is a special football player. Just fun to watch. It's hard to not just watch him and, and watch the rest of the game. Yeah, he's been third in the country in tackles for losses. You see him right here standing just outside the near hash bottom of your screen. He stands up predominantly as a rush in. A converted wide receiver to the defensive end. Give credit to his high school, Cedar Grove High School back in Atlanta, Georgia. The coaching staff turned him into a defensive end. Here's the handoff. This is Harris The Michael. Oh, boy, that's Malone who got him Did, with a shoestring tackle there. Harris probably yeah. scores if Malone doesn't make that You're a that football tackle. guy noticing that. I mean, most people would be like, nice run by Harris. Now, that was a great play by Malone right there. He got off the block and just got enough to get Harris down, or else that's a touchdown. I mean, you know, this Malone kid, he, he's all over the place. Those are the kind of plays that coaches love to see. To Michael Harris, boy, that's one of the fastest men, maybe not even in this conference, in the country. And he gets him on a shoestring tackle, does D'Angelo Malone. Harris to the left of Abraham. They're wanting to change the play. A couple of late play calls for the Southern Miss offense here tonight in Hattiesburg as night has begun to fall in South Mississippi. Play action pass. This is swung out, caught by Watkins, but it's just a short gain right there on the stop. That was their free safety, Devin Key. Watkins beginning to make his presence felt. That's his eighth reception. Going to give him close to 90 yards. Southern Miss lining up in a tight formation, looking like they might run the ball here. Yeah, third and short. Play action pass. This is swung out and dropped. Neil McLaurin does not complete the catch. He would have had the first down, one move, and he would have scored. The senior out of Laurel, Mississippi, he transferred here from Southwest Mississippi Community College. Yeah, that was a touchdown. Sometimes these receivers, they picture being in the end zone, but one thing to forget about at times is the ball. And uh, he definitely forgot about the football right there. This crowd on their feet. They're sensing the edge and the urgency of this ball game. Fourth and short, they'll hand it to Harris. Oh, boy, it will depend on the spot. Western Kentucky says they have turned them back. The tackle was made by Jawan Jones. That's the other defensive end, and they indicate, yeah, a stop. Yeah, they won't even measure, Marchand. Fourth and short plays are just man-on-man -man football. Just tighten your chin strap, and Jawan Jones tighten it up. Well, significantly right there. He's the thumper of that defensive line, 6'3", 270, and he has turned them away. 21-7 in Hattiesburg. Well, the Western Kentucky offense led by their quarterback, Ty Story, who's 18-27, 222 yards, two touchdowns tonight for Western Kentucky. They lead this football game 21-7.
I'll tell you what, we talked about that stat of them being a second half football team, and that's definitely come to fruition right now, although that McLaurin drop right there definitely changed the pace of this game. A handoff here to Gage Walker. They're going to run some clock here. Ran the ball 47 times against Arkansas, like we said earlier in the game, so they definitely have a grinded out offense when need be, and that's what I'd look to do if I'm a Coach Ty Helton. Well, that was their 24th rushing attempt of this football game so far. Southern Miss has done a good job against them rushing the football. Walker's got 16 carries for 46 yards. The one touchdown, that was to Jacquez Sloan. That was their opening touchdown. Story going to take this, wing it out. This is Lucky Jackson. Jackson has it, but short of the first down. Ty Williams, the senior out of Charleston, Mississippi, will bump Jackson out of bounds. You've seen those out routes all day today, these little timing routes. You'd think Southern Miss would man up a little and get off that soft zone. I mean, that's exactly what Western Kentucky wants to do. I don't think they're looking for any deep, big plays right now. They're just looking to run out this clock. So uh, don't be surprised Southern Miss tightens up the defense right here, especially on the third and short situation. Yeah, and you know, you'd almost anticipate a rush here. You almost get the sense that they feel pretty confident in their defensive unit late in this ball game. And it appears we've got a reset of the play clock is what we're going to have here. Yeah, they're going to bump it all the way to 40 seconds. So they'll have plenty of time here to run this clock. Story will bring, that's Jernigan, a little in from the outside sideline, the near sideline. This pass is incomplete. Boy, he was rocked. That was Malik Shorts, the red shirt freshman from just down the road in Jefferson Davis County, Bassfield, Mississippi, comes up to make this stop on Lucky Jackson. Oh, yeah. Thought it was going to be a first down catch right there, but Malik Shorts said, uh-uh, not today. Big play by the red shirt freshman who came from right down the road to get to Hattiesburg. Boy, that's how you tackle shoulder in the chest and right through the man. Speaking of man, Quez Watkins is that man. He stands back at the 45-yard line. Watkins could change this game. He's got that kind of ability. He's going to let this ball roll, though. Boy, that was a mistake. And it is going to roll all the way down to the 23-yard line. And penalty flags I think we're gonna fly. Get in. They think, are all we're, over the field. I think we're getting unsportsmanlike against Southern Miss. We'll wait on referee Billy Williams' call. But, yeah, there were bodies hitting the floor everywhere, right out in the middle of the field, kind of away from the football and away from the action. What a punt, though, from John Haggerty, Jr., all the way down <laughs> to the Southern Miss 22. It is one of those deceiving punts. Didn't get a lot of air time, just a lot of roll time. And, but uh, in the stats, it's going to look good. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 25 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first half. Oh boy, the punt's gonna get even longer here with the penalty. That'll be half the distance to the goal from the 22. That'll put it at the 11. Yeah, Tyler Barnes right there, getting a little bit out of character. The coaches are very high on him, but they're not gonna be high on him after a play like that. I mean, that, that really, Sets you back. It's hard enough to move the football against this Western Kentucky defense. As you can see, I mean, Southern Miss still hasn't put up a point in the second half. So we'll see what happens here. But we keep saying it. Sense of urgency is through the roof right now for Abraham and the crew. You can see it in his eyes right there. Yeah, good look there at co-offensive coordinator Scotty Walden coaching up this offense. There you see, too, right there, Buster Faulkner talking with this offensive unit. Well, it's been a nice day for Watkins. Eight catches, 90 yards. He needed 60 yards coming into today to move to third all-time in the career, career receiving yards list. He also needed two receptions today, which he has, to pass Ito Smith for fourth all-time in career receptions here in the Southern Miss wide receiver. Not finished, but boy, they could use him tonight. Abraham under pressure again. He lost the football. Guess who picked up? D'Angelo Malone. Did Malone have it enough to get it into the end zone? He lost the football through the end zone, which would actually be a touchback if it's a change of possession. So they're going to give him the touchdown. Not sure who they're going to charge it to. Malone appeared to have the football for the Hilltoppers. The side judge on that far side got wiped out right at the pylon of the goal line. 27-7, Western Kentucky. I would imagine they're going to take a look at this. 
and we'll see. Early indication seemed to be that it is a fumble, though, uh, but obviously you have to look at the replay. Abraham, too, walking off gingerly off the field here for Southern Miss, and maybe they won't. Maybe they're not even going to take a look at it. We'll get, another look. we'll get another look for you here in just a moment. Southern Miss fans heading for the exits right now. And rightfully so, because Western Kentucky is on top, 28 to 7, with 9.34 left in this fourth quarter tonight. It has been all Hilltoppers in Hattiesburg. What a play by their defense. We'll be back with much more football action on E. Twenty-eight to seven in MM Roberts. The fans that are left are here out of sheer dedication. Others have already hit the exits, Marshan Kenny, and this Western Kentucky team is trying to stay perfect against this Southern Miss Ball Club 2-0 all time. And they're doing it tonight with their defense, holding one of the more prolific offenses in all of the country to just seven points. Their defense has as many points as the Southern Miss offense tonight. You take away that 68-yard bomb to Tim Jones early in the season, and Southern Miss has way less than 200 yards of total offense right now. So, um, or, or right at 200 yards of offense. This is Harris, the Michael Harris. Harris returning the kick. He's got one of these on the year. A 100-yard kickoff return. That was against Louisiana Tech. Here, he'll get it out to about the 22-yard line and no further. D'Angelo Malone, though, we featured him in the open. We knew what kind of player he was coming in, and boy, has he lived up to the billing. He gets points for his team tonight from his defensive end position, scooping up that fumble out of the hand of Jack Abraham. I mean, Jason, being an ex-defensive guy, I love watching defensive football, and you love a special talent to watch like D'Angelo Malone. I mean, they've dropped him back in the coverage a lot. They have him on a on a slot receiver in coverage. I mean, they blitz him all over the place. He's, he's in a stand-up sprinter stance to, to blitz. I mean, like I said, defensive coordinator Clayton White said he's never seen backside speed like that D'Angelo has. I mean, it, it, he's a special football player. How about his night? Five tackles, a sack, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown for the defensive end D'Angelo Malone. Here's a flea flicker to Tim Jones, and that is step-for-step -step coverage, but a flag comes in here at the end of the play, running. That was the nickel back to Corian Darden, a former walk-on, now on scholarship for Western Kentucky. He had the coverage. Coverage looked good, man. I, I, I'm not going to lie, I have a, might have a problem if they call this defensive pass interference. We'll see what the call is. Here's our referee, Billy Williams. Pass interference on the defense. Number 15. 15-yard 15 penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. I disagree right there, Jason. They said. Darden was the MVP of their fall camp. Here he is, step for step with Tim Jones. Well, I don't know. That's I'm a tough that call one, against Western Kentucky there. I am not seeing that. Yeah, Darden with, uh, we've seen a lot more contact tonight. But nonetheless, a penalty has moved this football up to the 38-yard line. This is Jack Abraham in the shotgun. Four wide receivers set, two to his left, two to his right. Abraham down the middle of the field. Yeah, Abraham has definitely been bothered tonight. There you see him with pressure again on Abraham. That pass wasn't even close. Yeah, that was not close. I mean, they've been in Abraham's face all day. You, you really haven't seen this a lot from any defense against his Southern Miss offense. I mean, Jack right now, 16 out of 31, just 50% basically passing completing. Um, like I said, under 200 yards passing. You take away that big play from Tim Jones, and we didn't expect to see that. No, he has been sharp all year. Of course, he's been upright all year, too. They had This offensive line had allowed just 14 sacks. Here's Abraham with his legs. He's going to be tackled down. Oh, boy, he wow. went down tough, too. I'll tell you right what, that on didn't the, look good. No, it did not. He went down hard right here in the middle of the field. You've also got an offensive lineman for Southern Miss. That's Kalik Washington, who is also down the training staff for Southern Miss out to check on both of those Southern Miss players. And uh, it was going to wind up being a third down and about four facing Southern Miss after that Abraham rush attempt. And boy, what's left of the crowd here tonight in the Rock is uh, just gone to a dead silence here in Hattiesburg. Western Kentucky leads this one. You can see it on your screen, 28-7. to They're going to help them both up. Washington coming off underneath his own power. Abraham 
is being help, helped off the field. I hope it's not too bad. I mean, Jack Abraham's such a good leader for this team. And that was a big number 70 right there. You hate to see your lineman go down as well. So hopefully nothing too bad right there. But you know, that brings in uh, Tate Watley. And, you know, we haven't talked about him all year because Jack Abraham has been the guy all year. I mean, Watley hadn't thrown a pass. But in the preseason at the Conference USA Media Days, I mean, Coach Hobson, far of comparison to Tate Wiley, but here's the play right here. You see Abraham really go down hard with that leg, and you hope it's not too bad. Um, he put a little bit of weight on it walking off the field, but definitely not on his own. But that brings in Tate Wiley. Yep, he's a sophomore out of Lakeland, Florida. He does have three rushing attempts out of the quarterback position this season for just eight yards. That's the statistics on Tate Watley on this 2019 season. We said it earlier, the only player on this Golden Eagle roster that has attempted a pass has been Neil McLaurin besides Jack Abraham. Here you see Watley with the carry, and he is going to wind up two yards shy. A little bit more athletic of the two quarterbacks when you compare Abraham and Watley. I mean, like I said, Coach Hop compared him a little bit to Favre, and Favre is a very mobile quarterback, you know, obviously one of the best ever put on the black and gold in Hattiesburg. But wow, what a game today. 28 to 7 Western Kentucky. I mean, you, you knew they were good. You knew they were solid. But 28 to 7 coming down here against a really good Southern Miss football team. I mean, this is a shocker. Watley will fire this out on fourth down and it is incomplete. Watkins cannot hang on to it. They're going to rule it an incomplete pass here along this near sideline, and let's take a look. And look at Malone going back into coverage. I mean, who got a hand on the ball right there, Malone? And um, comes up short for the first down right there. Oh, I don't know. That, that could easily be overturned. Watkins looks like he got all the way to the ground with it at his chest. They're I don't know if that's a reviewable it. play. I don't know. It looks Are like they taking a look? they're trying. That's, I think... That's sort of what they're asking is the Southern Miss sideline. That's sort of what they're pleading for here. 8.08 to play. Another look. Let's, let's take another look at this. So it's in his chest there. He hits the ground. And then the ball comes loose. That's one of those, you know, the rule, technically the whole football motion, you have to have control of the ball. And through the play, through the whole roll, he really didn't have the ball. So technically, according to the rules, that's not a catch. Ty Story into the belly of Gage Walker. And Walker will have about three yards for Western Kentucky. Boy, a lot of credit has got to be poured upon this Western Kentucky Hilltopper unit. They have come in well prepared today. Tyson Helton's ball club, they're six and four. They've had a bye week last week. They were coming off that big win over Arkansas, 45 to 19. And they have come into M.M. Roberts Stadium today and have completely controlled this football game. Their defense has as many points as they've given up in this football game. Yeah, we really haven't talked about head coach Tyson Helton quite enough today for Western Kentucky. I mean, he definitely knows a lot about Southern Miss football as Western Kentucky gets another big play right here. Yeah, this is the but running back, Gage Walker. Walker's going to have it all the way down to the 12-yard line. Well, if there was any hope for Southern Miss to come back in this one, Walker probably just ended all of that. It's going to make it very challenging. But a little bit more on Tyson Helton. You know, he played quarterback, backup quarterback for the Houston Cougars back 96 to 99. Played for his dad, Kim Helton, who was the head coach at Houston at that point. And we found an interesting topic, too, about his dad, Kim Helton. Great story. He was called the love coach because he had that relationship advice radio show, if you remember. So really cool little family story right there with those two in the Helton family. But he definitely knows, knows Southern Miss football and how to win against them. Yeah, he's known as a quarterback guru. Here's a pitch play. This is the Jacourt Pearson on a shovel pass, and Pearson is going to lose yardage back to the 16-yard line. But Helton has, under his tutelage, has had a guy by the name of Sam Darnold. Know him? Yeah, he's with the New York Jets. He was in the first round out of USC. Brandon Dowdy, the seventh-round pick, he was the guy who was the quarterback who defeated this Golden Eagle Club in that Conference USA Championship game. And then Joe Webb, boy, he was a hidden gem at UAB, went on to an NFL career with the Minnesota Vikings. Those have all been quarterbacks underneath Tyson Helton's watch. You saw just a moment ago on your screen the numbers uh, by Ty Story, 20 of 30 for 225. Here's a handoff to Gage Walker. Walker, a nice knifing run. Tackle made by redshirt freshman 
Hayes Maples to come up and make the stop. Maples has played well. He's been thrust into uh, sort of this role today due to an injury to Swayze Bozeman. We've not seen Bozeman since early in the first half. Oh, yeah. I mean, both linebackers that start are out were Keen Booth, Swayze Bozeman makes it challenging. But this is where younger guys get to play, and they're high on Hayes Maples. I mean, you look at him, he looks apart. Definitely a freshman size like that can move really well because uh, these linebackers do have to play both spots. But this sets up a, a tough finish for Southern Miss. They've got a really tough game next week at Florida Atlantic. And, uh, you know, the way this season's finishing right now with this game, you, you have to really question how tough that's going to be down in Florida. And you see Western Kentucky happy to leave it in the belly of Gage Walker here. They're going to get this next snap off. Under five minutes left to play here in this fourth quarter. I'll tell you what, one thing, let's talk more about Western Kentucky. I mean, kudos to them right now. I mean, you know, we told the stat they don't give up a lot of points in the second half. I mean, they've held four teams with no points in the fourth quarter. It looks like number five, unless Southern Miss gets a last minute drive and put some points on the board. So, I mean, this is a well coached, well oiled machine they got going right now. And they've got a loss on their record that I. I I just can't grasp how they lose to Central Arkansas to kick off the season. I mean, Central Arkansas is a good FCS team, but still, wow, because um, they're playing really good football. Timeout. You see Tyson Helton, West good Kentucky. shot by our camera crew there, first. the head coach who is seconds. doing a fantastic job in his first season as the head coach of Western Kentucky. We'll be back with him from Hattiesburg, Mississippi on PN. goal attempt of the season and Southern Miss avoids giving up more points in this ball game and uh, Marchant you know on a night where you expected a competitive ball game and it certainly has been that from somewhat of a standpoint but really and truly this has been a Western Kentucky style of game they've been balanced you're looking at a rushing attack of 116 yards passing 231 uh, through the air, only one turnover. They had no points come off that turnover uh, here tonight. And, and really and truly, it just has felt like a hilltopper football game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, coming into this game, I mean, if you hadn't heard of Western Kentucky, you sure have now. I mean, they they go into Arkansas and absolutely blow them out 45 to 19 a couple weeks ago. And then they come into the Rock against a really good Southern Miss team who on paper, I thought maybe had a little bit more talent. Uh, and they just completely dominate this game when you really look at the big picture. I mean, it's hard to talk about Southern Miss the way this game has gone. I mean, this is a hilltop of football game, and they definitely impressed both of us and emptied this stadium. Well, Southern Miss doesn't even have 100 yards rushing in this football game, just 92 yards rushing. They have 225 through the air to the Golden Eagle offense, 68 of that 225, and we've harped on this, came on one pass to Tim Jones. That was back early uh, in the first quarter. Since that point, this Hilltopper defense has essentially uh, made themselves present in this football game, and they've been led by their two DNs. You know, we've talked about Malone, but Jawan Jones is a guy who made the stop just a moment ago deep into their own territory when Southern Miss was threatening inside the red zone. It was Jawan Jones on that fourth down to turn him back, and it's been that collective unit, and then the star tonight, Besides Malone has maybe been their middle linebacker, 36, Kyle Bailey, who came in with 77 tackles on the season. Coming into tonight, he had one more than D'Angelo Malone, but a guy that has been all over the field tonight for the Hilltoppers. Oh, I tell you what, some of the names that have popped up besides Malone tonight have definitely been impressive. And just as impressive as that, I mean, Southern Miss has tested this secondary with deep routes and deep balls. And I mean, they've been step for step in the secondary with the receiving core, I mean, a very fast receiving core too at Southern Miss. So super impressive team right here in Western Kentucky. Watley downfield here. This pass is caught. That's Tim Jones. Jones, the junior out of Biloxi with another reception. That's his fifth of the day. He'll have it up to the 34 yard line. Jones is actually gonna go over 100 yards receiving. He'll be the leading receiver in his ball game today, and you see Watley here. Yeah, Tim Jones, the tough guy of this wide receiving core. You know he's going to play the full 60 minutes and not give up. I mean, you see him struggling for extra yards in a game that's technically over. 
Tate Watley downfield. He's going to Watkins. Two men are there, and it is dropped in and out of the arms of the cornerback. That's Deontay Ruffin, the corner who has had the coverage on Quez Watkins for most of the night. That time, he just read Watley and backed up off of Watkins and nearly came down with the interception. Well, I mean, the secondary, they've been so impressive tonight. I mean, there's another example. Quez Watkins, one of the toughest guys to stop on a nine route, and they're step for step with him with three guys around him basically right there breaking up the pass. Um, we've called the secondary's name several times, and they've had a big job to stop this receiving court Southern Miss, and they have. Watley, a design quarterback run. This is really what he can do. He's chased out here by Devin Key. The free safety. Key has played well tonight as well for Western Kentucky, but Watley had some action last year. He was 42 of 75 throwing last year for 451 yards for the Golden Eagles. Four touchdowns and interception. He had a long pass completion of 57 yards. He was thrust into that action when Jack Abraham was out due to an injury last year. There was legit competition for the quarterback role going into camp this year, I mean, between Abraham and Watley. But all of a sudden, Abraham did step up and take up the entire role. Uh, but I know they're high on Watley. Like I said earlier, I mean, Coach Jay Hobson said some far of comparisons to him. Well, Southern Miss will attempt their fourth, fourth down conversion of the day. They are previously 0 for 3 in this contest against Western Kentucky. That's Perkins to the right of Watley. Watley up top. This is the Tim Jones who has it, and he is going to step out of bounds. A catch made by Tim Jones at the 25-yard line. That was nice touch applied on the deep ball by Tate Watley. Oh, yeah, still trying to stretch this secondary out. Great throw by Watley over the top, dropping it right into Tim Jones' hands. And like I said, Tim Jones is a guy that's going to give you 60 minutes. It really is. Jones having a day from his wide receiver position today up to 143 yards on six catches for Tim Jones. That's a 23-yard average. Here he is again across the middle of the field. He'll be chopped down at the nine-yard line, but not after another pass completion to Tim Jones. He's got a flag on the field right here. Got to see what this is. Let's listen in to our ref. 53 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal added on to the end of the run. Automatic, first down. What do you think, Jason? Am I too quick to say this is over? I mean, Southern Miss scores a touchdown, gets an onside kick, scores, gets an onside kick, scores. It, hey. Crazier things have happened have in happened. college Absolutely. football, Absolutely. but, but it, it certainly seems daunting against a defense quite like this. Right. Tate Watley in the gun. They'll, be, they'll move Harris, the Michael Harris, to his running back position. Design QB run here by Watley. And boy, look at that play. Clay Davis. The Sam linebacker for the Hilltoppers just gets off his block immediately and wraps Tate Watley up to put him down in the middle of that offensive line. I've kept an eye on Clay Davis. I mean, anytime your linebacker can go step for step with the Michael Harris, if you remember that play earlier, earlier in the game that he covered the Michael Harris like a blanket, um, that's impressive by a linebacker to have that fleet of foot. Watley looking to his right. He will fire into the end zone, and that is incomplete. A lot of contact, but I believe they're going to rule the ball in catchable by Quez Watkins. Antoine Kincaid with the coverage right there. Great coverage for the junior out of Valdosta, Georgia. So it is third and goal from the five facing Southern Miss. This is a Western Kentucky team. They're still alive in the Conference USA Eastern race, essentially, although a look to that Conference USA school board would probably tell you they've now been eliminated from that Eastern Division race. Marshall was winning earlier the last we checked to the school board. So a Marshall win would eliminate Western Kentucky's chances as they don't have the tiebreaker over Marshall. Watley to the end zone. That's over the head of Watkins. Incomplete. It's going to set up another fourth down where Southern Miss is one for four today from fourth down. Great coverage right there once again. That was uh, Deontay Ruff and the junior out of Kenner, Louisiana. Making a big play right there, stopping the Southern Miss scoring attempt. And Southern Miss is going to run their field goal unit out onto the field, down 28 to 7. They're going to give Andrew Stein an opportunity to kick this football through the uprights. Their freshman field goal kicker. Jason, this is an interesting call right here. 
Yeah, Stein is 0 for 1 today. He missed a 44-yarder earlier in the ballgame. High snap, good hold. Stein puts it through. Golden Eagles on the board. That makes it 28 to 10. An 18-point differential here with 152 left to play in the fourth quarter. Yeah, interesting call right there. I mean, I don't quite get that. You still need uh, three scores. So a 22-yard field goal for Andrew Stein. That was his 17th field goal made of the season for the freshman out of Slidell, Louisiana. Played at North Shore High School. And you hear the pride of Mississippi across the way playing here inside M.M. Roberts Stadium. Marshall losing to Charlotte. FAU is well. They're on top UTSA. So Western Kentucky has to have Marshall lose. They're losing right now to Charlotte 23-13. And then they would also need Florida Atlantic to lose. They do not have a tiebreaker over, over either one of the ball clubs. But if both of those teams were to drop their contest today, they would have a chance because FAU plays this Southern Miss team next week down in Boca Raton. Charlotte on top at the moment. Actually just took and put the points up. Yeah, Charlotte's on top of Marshall, 24-13. We've got a timeout on the field as they looked at the onside kick formation here of Southern Miss. Sure, it seems daunting for Tyson Helton's ball club, and uh, maybe they don't have maybe the greatest odds of winning that Conference USA East Division Championship, but I tell you what, they have come into Hattiesburg today, and they have played like a championship ball club. Oh, absolutely. And when you look at this Conference USA Eastern side of things versus the Western Division, I tell you what, the Eastern Division is pretty tough with Marshall, uh, Florida Atlantic and, and Western Kentucky as far as talent-wise. And, and now you argue Western Kentucky is the best team in that East Division playing their best football right now. I mean, going to Arkansas winning 45 to 19. Coming into Hattiesburg winning 28 to 10 against a real good Southern Miss football team. And this is where we throw out some facts, Jason, because it's getting late in the game. A good fun fact about Western Kentucky, their athletic trainer, head athletic trainer, Jessica Judd, one of only 11 female head athletic Athletic, athletic trainers in all of the U.S. So pretty cool uh, for Jessica Judd to be leading the female role over there with the athletic training court. Onside kick on the way, and guess who? Lucky Jackson, their leading receiver, has recovered the onside kick. Got a great bounce. Golden Eagles just could not get on top of it. Yeah, Western Kentucky in their two losses. The turnovers got high against Marshall and FAU. They only lost to Marshall 26-23. FAU, they got beat 35-24. And there's a look at the Conference USA scoreboard. Yeah, that's pouring salt in the wound of the Golden Eagle faithful when they look at that UAB score, essentially with UAB winning that ball game 20-14. Now, here's the good news for Southern Miss. They're not totally out of this Conference USA championship race quite yet because they own the tiebreaker over UAB. But, uh, boy, on a night like this, with a win, if the Golden Eagles could have pulled that off against Western Kentucky, they would have been playing next week for an opportunity and a berth into that Conference USA Championship and possibly an opportunity to even host this Conference USA Championship. But tonight, I would have assumed the, the hosting possibilities uh, have really been wiped away with uh, this uh, potential loss to Western Kentucky. This ball is not over left. officially yet, but uh, down 28 to 10, and like you said, Taking that field goal a moment ago, still a three-possession ball game now for Southern Miss. I don't quite understand that. I mean, uh, you still need three scores, but I guess they want to get double digits on the board or maybe want to get some field goal practice in, but I, I really don't understand that one. But, yeah, I mean, it's not over for the Southern Miss team technically in the standings. I mean, there's a three-way tie in the West now. La Tech's got two losses. UAB's got two losses. Southern Miss has two losses. So it uh, gets down to next week. But like I said, the way Southern Miss played tonight, that makes next week game – next week's game at Florida Atlantic that much more daunting and um, that's going to be a challenging trip on senior day Florida Atlantic and then Western Kentucky I mean the way they're playing right now they're going to be a tough team to beat down the road in whatever bowl they wind up in. Well, bon Jovi's playing here they're singing living on a prayer inside the rock tonight here in the fourth quarter and that's exactly what the Golden Eagles are doing at the moment they're living on a prayer here as they have got to get a stop here on the second down. They get a only a one-yard gain. That was to the backup tailback who is in now for Western Kentucky. That's actually the first carry tonight for somebody different than Gage Walker out of that running back position. That's Geno Appleberry Jr. 
with the carry for Western Kentucky. Yeah, they've had just a couple of other rushes. Of course, Story's had six carries tonight. Jacquez Sloan had the one rushing attempt, and then here you see Appleberry Jr. with a couple of carries and seven yards, setting up a third down and three. I guess, essentially, this one's not over, but it feels that way. Uh, you know, Jason, I'm a big name guy, though. I, I think you moved away from that name too fast. Gino Appleberry. How good is that? Is that pretty, just, that's a pretty cool name, right? Absolutely. Gino Appleberry. I like it. So Ty Story out as the quarterback at the moment. Kavarius Thomas. How about this guy? He's 6'4", 250. Redshirt freshman quarterback. He will leave it in the belly of another tailback in for Western Kentucky. That is going to be Garland LaFrance, the wide receiver who takes the carry. That was his first touch of this ball game, and we've got some pushing and shoving going on after the play. Talk about the main game right there. We got Gino Appleberry on the play before. Now we have Garland LaFrance. I'll tell you what, man, I'm enjoying calling these names. Well, they have spotted the ball at the 30, well, on the 35 side of the 36 yard line. So they're at the 35 and a half yard line, which to me, they have indicated that it would be fourth down, but that's not the case. The line to gain was the 36 yard line. So with the spot of that football, it has moved the chains and it should be a first down for Western Kentucky and Southern Miss is out of timeout. Yeah, tough loss for Coach Hobson. I mean, this is not what you expected tonight. Losing 28 to 10 on senior day. I mean, good group of seniors, uh, you know, really well respected around town. They do things well on the field and off the field. So tough way to go out at the Rock, but they still have one more game together and then a bowl game possible. Hey, Conference USA championship. You never know because I mean, like I said, three-way tie in the West. So bring up some interesting scenarios. You you pulled up the chart during one of the breaks on all the scenarios and you know. Almost need a degree to figure it out. But, yeah, this you know. <laughs> race, yeah, this Conference USA Western Division race is certainly not over yet, but it's going to be big uh, for Southern Miss. They have to win next week. There is only one scenario for them it, of losing both ball, uh, ball games in which they could still make it to the Conference USA championship. And I mean, boy, that seems really far-fetched and really out of reach. So they have to go down to Boca Raton next week, uh, uh, get a win against an FAU club who has really played consistent. That's an FAU club that beat this Western Kentucky uh, ball team earlier this year, 35-24. And so Lane Kiffin and the Owls of FAU will be the opponent awaiting Southern Miss. For Western Kentucky, they head back to the hill in Bowling Green. They're going to take on Middle Tennessee, a very winnable ball game for Tyson Helton's club. They've got an opportunity to close this season out with eight wins uh, in a possible bowl berth for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. And uh, I can't say enough how impressed I've been with their execution on the road in here uh, in the, one of the toughest places to play in all of Conference USA. They have executed beautifully. By the way, they have moved the spot back shy of the 36. It is fourth and short and a handoff here. That was the Appleberry and he's got it down to the 35 yard line. Gino Appleberry Jr. with the carry. You saw the excitement from Caveras Thomas, the freshman backup quarterback right there getting that first down. You got to love that kind of passion this late in the game. That That's a sign of a well coached football team, you know, taking a lot of pride in everything you do to the last second. Well, the coaching staff, they're in the booth next to us. They're getting out of here for Western Kentucky. Their offensive coordinator, Brian Ellis, he'll come back into the Rock as now a coach and get another win. He was a part of a 50-49 to victory for the UAB Blazers in double overtime. That was back in the 2011 football season. He had three touchdowns and a rushing touchdown as well. And this one is all but formalities now with a clock rolling, no timeouts in the pocket of Southern Miss and though uh, as we get ready to wrap this ball game up on a on a wonderful season Marshan Kenny and a special thank you to our spotter Dalton Bradley for all he does uh, for us up here in this television booth Western Kentucky uh, one more snap of the football and they will have uh, victory in their hands yeah Kavarius Thomas will leave it to Appleberry Jr. look at him out in space makes a little move he's upended by Kyle Hemby and that should be it. That should be the final play of this football game as Jay Hobson and Tyson Helton are getting ready to greet here on the field.
here at M.M. Roberts Stadium here this afternoon. Western Kentucky, Marchant, just what a performance by the Hilltoppers. Wow, what a performance is right. I mean, we knew coming in they were one heck of a football team with that offensive line arguably being the best offensive line in Conference USA. Probably the best defender, one of the best defenders in America, Malone, and he made a lot of plays, including that big touchdown at the end. Um, they free him up in space, do a lot of things. So they're going to be a tough team to beat down the stretch. Still technically alive in that East Division. Southern Miss really hurt their chances, though, for hosting the conference game. They're still alive in the West to make the Conference USA Championship game. But, man, what a tough challenge at Florida Atlantic next week. So for Marshant Kenny, I'm Jason Baker saying so long from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, where the final score is 28 to 10. Western Kentucky, all games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and are archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.